I can't wait to see Patrice. Patrice, very, very funny on stage, man. Love watching his show. And do us a favor, go see Patrice O'Neill, because Anthony and I called in so many favors to Greg Charles when Brian Regan was in town. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, table for 18, please. It's not like Brian really sells a lot. It's yeah. not like you're giving up uh, any real money. <laughs> Saturday, 8 o'clock show. That one never goes clean. Yeah. Greg and, and, Charles doesn't know how to say no, man, because I called him last minute. Uh, Greg, uh, I need a table for six. Friday, 1030 show. I love that guy. He oh, never says way, no, gentlemen. The guy way, has never a, said no. I have a red mature audience's only stamp on the front of my poster. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> mature. It's, Greg is the stamp. best. He, he take, yeah. and, and talk about, you know, taking care of us. Oh, my God. The guy God. completely hooks us up. Unbelievable. And I wind, and then I wind up looking like a good guy because then I'll, I'll tip the, the wait staff. Like the second the waitress comes over. And goes, you want something? I pull out a C note because I know that would have been like spent just getting in to see uh, the shows. I, I give him a C note and I go, you just keep coming back, make sure uh, the table's taken care of. Well, you know they have a hundred uh, employees that split. Do they? So I gave her a yeah. buck. You gave her a dollar. Yeah. I stink. <laughs> Why don't you just hand her two penny rolls? You know, she must have loved that dollar because she was back every second. <laughs> Can I help you, Mr. Kumia? <laughs> Unless she put it in a sock. <laughs> yeah, she probably did. <laughs> you gotta don't, think. don't flash that around. Don't give it to me yet. <laughs> you gotta think That's if what she was saying. You got to think if you're splitting tips and someone, uh, every once in a while you get that $100 bill oh. or something, you're throwing it in your Please. sock. and it's going in the garter. You're throwing a 10 in the, in the, uh, yeah. in the old. They're all calling him <laughs> Anthony the Jew in the back. Yeah, that oh, a cheap ten bastard. Look, ten bucks. <laughs> Hold, it. <laughs> Hold it like a wet baby yeah. from the feet. Oh. <laughs> Looking at it, laughing at it. Bastard staff. Pick up a dead rat by the tail. <laughs> Your thumb and pointer finger. This is what he left, cheapo. When I was growing up, I was a caddy at the Huntington Crescent Club, and uh, you know, coming from a large family, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. So, uh, the money I made at the the country club would have to go to the family for food and all this crap, right? And I stu I learned I learned early on stuff the sock yeah stuff the sock mom it was a slow day man I only did one loop here's twenty dollars meanwhile I, I I went out with the mafia guys your, your life is the beginning of Caddyshack <laughs> oh it absolutely put it in there I saw another five dude that's why that movie's so great to me I lived that life and uh, you know they didn't know that Who's I had kid is this they didn't know I had, <laughs> they didn't know I had the mafia you know guys that day and they're giving me a hundred dollar tip because I I read the pe the putt right on eighteen. Uh -huh. close uh -huh. to the old Billy I, I, I'm coming home going ah mom twenty dollars today it was a slow day and my my sock is bulging. Nobody likes a tattletale, so of course me. And then you I told a heartwarming white guy tip stealing story. <laughs> it's guys like Time to go to work, Hope. <laughs> you get the big bag. And then I cut a hole in my room in the uh, wallpaper, to, and I was stuffing the wall with hey. my cash. Hey, Opie, when are you do back in Boys Town, all right? Even then, Opie. <laughs> what? Even then, you was a skin flint. <laughs> I wasn't a skin flint. I was, I was buying groceries for my family when, we I, was, for when I was 14 years old. I had How'd you like to mow my lawn? Uh, I, I had to keep a little for myself, Patrice. You know, no. the, way cat, the way Caddyshack is like your life, my life was kind of like Caddyshack too. Ugh. A disaster no, no, that no, no one cared no. about. <laughs> no, that no one went to see. <laughs> no one went to see. <laughs> it, ra it raked in $4.800 at the box office. <laughs> $4.800. Oh, that Marshall Warfield was a hoot, though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's funny with that, you know, hiding the money. I did that growing up. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I never had money. Because I kind of had to empty my pockets when I came in the front door. I'm like, oh, man, I waited three hours just to get out. I, I made $20. Here it is. Slow day. Although my dad did take a percentage when I was, and I was, I had to be 13 years old and I was washing dishes at some place called the El Adobe Restaurant in San Juan Capistrano. And President Nixon used to come and eat there. And we, they used to bring out the presidential seal plates and I'd have to wash them. Felt honored. <laughs> and, and I'd have to give, like, uh, I'd have to give 20% of my pay to my father for, like, room and board. I was 13. <laughs> oh, I wish man. I had a dad around to teach me those goofy lessons. Oh, like, it was a, a percentages. Uh, goofy. Goofy lessons. <laughs> meanwhile, he meanwhile he was unemployed, and he I, I'd get off of school and walk to the stable where where we kept our horses, and him and Chato Reyes, these um, a Mexican guy, and uh, his brother Juan Reyes would be sitting around with tall boy buds, and my dad going, "You learn anything in school today?" Like, and then I'd have to get done and go to work and give twenty percent to the house.
Yeah. Here's the hardest lesson I ever learned about money ever from my mom. She's probably listening, and she hates when I tell this story. But I had a car accident and got about 10 Gs when I was about, Ooh. like, 15, 16. Gave my mother four Gs. Now, as an adult now, wow. four Gs to you, Mike. If somebody says, hey, I got four Gs, you might go, ah, get out of my face. But as a kid, I gave my mother four Gs. It's a lot of money. Four Gs to and a then, kid is incomprehensible. And then, and to a kid. So she bought, like, a bunch of stuff. And I said, she's, like, complaining about money. I said, I just gave you four Gs. <laughs> she goes, she goes, Man, F that punk ass four thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt me to this day. <laughs> she called my four oh. thousand out of my cut face and my busted up nose and my knocked out That's teeth. That's four million that punk to ass a four kid. thousand dollars. I was like, to this day it hurt my feelings. Oh. Well, how do you think she feels? That's a week's worth of lunches. <laughs> 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 Speaking of that, uh, people are talking about Patrice's show this uh, weekend at Caroline's, saying uh, they're wondering if this time the chains are going to be strong enough and the city won't be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> All right, listen. we got to play the stalker patty And, thing. of course, that came from Bayshore, Long Island. Yeah. It's racist. <laughs> we, uh, I read it. We celebrated my birthday yesterday, Patrice. Happy birthday. Good and you know Stalker Patty, right? Yeah, what happened to her? What happened to What y'all do bad to Patty? Oh, oh boy. Well, <laughs> anything bad to her is fun to us. Well, Stalker Patty came in to give uh, some gifts for my birthday. Awful gifts. Actually, I didn't mind the gifts because I'm drinking coffee and uh, she, she works at Starbucks, so she got yeah, me some Starbucks. Some coffee. And the coupons, which you ripped up in her face. Yeah, and the coupons for uh, Frappuccinos. And I'm like, I don't drink Frappuccinos. Rip, rip, rip. Yeah. And then uh, we decided to make her cry again. We've shaved her head twice. Yep. And as she's uh, in studio yesterday, this was late in the show, uh, we noticed that her hair just looked absolutely awful. Yeah, it's very dry. Her hair is like straw. Yeah. And um, we were thinking maybe it's time to just shave her head and give her some new, let it grow out into some new fresh hair. And she uh, definitely doesn't want to go through that again. Like we said, we did it twice before so she could win tickets or for money or something. She was destitute. So we shaved it. And let me tell you, what she looks like with a shaved head, <laughs> I swear to God, when the Allies liberated Auschwitz, they didn't see people that looked as bad as Patty looks with a shaved head. And she looked like the pianist. Oh, the, the pianist. <laughs> she... Is the definitive concentration camp. Like any time they want to do a movie about uh, the concentration camp, they should call her up. She can make a fortune. Just shave the head. So she doesn't want to do that again. So for my birthday, I figured I, I wanted a real present. I wanted, you know, Starker Patty to have a shaved head again. And we got clippers in the studio. Yeah. So uh, Danny was rummaging around. He found the clippers, plugged them in, and we had a mic right near her. And Club Soda Kenny was holding the door shut. And there's no way she's getting past that animal. And uh, she's trying to open the door. She turns around. Danny's coming at her with the clippers. You hear the clipper noise. And she loses her mind. I swear to you, it's like a murder scene. This is very disturbing because as she's losing her mind and screaming, they're singing happy birthday to me. That was a gift. It's like one of those scenes out of a movie where it's not just one killer, like it's the whole family is nuts, and you're sitting around, and, and you're getting murdered, and the family is doing something ridiculous, and others are laughing, and one is playing with a doll, and this one's just cooking. Like, that's what the scene was. Remember the scene in Rosemary's Baby, where you're expecting help, and they're all going, Satan is his father. Yeah, right, yeah. They're all in on it. Wait right. right. a minute. Right. They're all in on it. She got no sympathy in there. She's screaming for her life, he and we're no all eyes. singing and laughing. <laughs> With that said, here's the audio from yesterday. Check it out. We gotta shave your head again, I think. No. And you start over. Yeah, no. Patty. Oh. No. Yeah. You know when we shaved. Grab her. Grab her. Oh. When we shaved your head, you had a much better attitude. Yeah. Close the door, Kenny. Yeah. Close the. Get yeah, the clippers. Yeah. Close out. the door. Get the clippers. No. Yep. Yep. No. Time to shave your head. No, I don't want that. That's no. all right. You'll get it, used to it. It's my birthday gift. There's the wig. It's my birthday gift. Get used gift. to Oh, boy. Patty. Oh, yeah, Patty's no. going to... Yeah, we, we also got to bring up uh, the wig was acknowledged there. Uh, she wound up buying a wig, or somebody gave her a wig uh, while she, her head was shaved so she could go out into society. <laughs> and it is the worst wig 
you'd ever want to see. <laughs> she would have looked more dignified if she just carried a mop and put it over her head. <laughs> I think it's what it was. Wait a minute, so bald, she didn't look like uh, Sinead O'Connor? Like oh. That oh, no. Like, no. Was, she got, got over with it? No. No. It was no protest look to her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she looked like be, Sinead. Yeah. Oh, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Uh, it was either, yeah, uh, concentration camp, cancer, or brain surgery. Nothing dignified. Nothing hot, nothing sexy. You ever see sometimes a woman can shave her head and look, and she's got a very pretty face yeah. and body, and you go like, wow, how the hell does a girl pull off the shaved head look? Yeah. The opposite end of that spectrum is Patty. Horrid. Just looks... Oh, my goodness. So we'll get back to the audio here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to acknowledge this is deeply disturbing. I don't want your hate email and your hate phone calls. Please remove the children from the room. You may want to turn the dial and get yeah. the let out somewhere. This disturbs you. <laughs> here it is. It's Patty's going to open the door. Here it's it comes. My, it's my birthday <laughs> gift. Oh my it's God. our ber It's Opie's birthday <laughs> gift no, to himself. No. In. <laughs> to fire it up. I you hear that, Patty? No. We got a wig for you. I don't want that. No. Can we get a mic over there? No. Get a wig Here it comes. No. Here it comes. Here it comes, Patty. No. 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 I don't want that. No. 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 Oh, no. I don't want that. No. But we do. No, I don't. It's my birthday, oh, Jim. It's my no wig. You look pretty in the I wig. I don't want that. Happy do it. birthday do it. to no. you. No, no. Happy birthday no. to you. No. Happy birthday, no. dear no. Opie. No. Happy birthday no. to you. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, no. Stop thinking of yourself, Patty. Think of others. You're a selfish no. bitch. Your whole life is one act of you, you, you. Were you, no. were you undo so the cord? She's got a wig here and everything. She's out of reach because you, <clears throat> you didn't undo the cord. No, undo the cord there, Danny. There we go. No. Happy birthday no. to you. No. Happy birthday no. to you. No. Happy birthday, no, dear no, Opie. No, Happy no, birthday no, to no, you. No, Take the hair. No. 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 no She's crying. No. <laughs> She's just weeping. And why do we bully Patty? Because we're tough guys. <laughs> you notice we don't try to shave Patrice's head? No. Or or Anyone Steve? else comes in here? Because it'll be one. It'll be Steve. one. Nah, chill out. Club soda, Kenny. <laughs> All right, man, relax. <laughs> yeah. Shave Patrice's head. Nah, nah. All right, man. Punch of faggots. <laughs> we pick on old ladies. And unfortunately, we don't have the rest of the audio. We had to stop because she started screaming that she was having an asthma attack. An asthma attack. She's like a little Yorkshire Terrier, just out of breath. And I'm, I know, but why? whenever she's going, no, no, it just makes me hate her. Yeah, I know. I don't know why, why is that? Because it's disingenuous. She's a she's a masochist, man. I, when, when she did those, uh, the, the, the mousetrap. Mousetrap, the yeah. It's like this, this, oh my, every time she found where the pain was. It's, yeah. It's a, it's, she's a masochist. Yeah, there's something weird going on there. I just can't control the laughter. I, I was laughing through the entire thing at her horror, her sheer terror on her face. The screams, the crying just made me laugh. And that's the type of audio you hear, like, once the show is eventually fired again. <laughs> yeah. That's what you <laughs> Happy birthday. This is the kind of radio show they were doing. You know what? Norton can't even enjoy stuff like this no more. Enough. Because he's like going, oh, man, are we going to get fired for this? Dude, <laughs> everything we do now, we think, how is this going to look when we're fired? You know, like everything we do on video, on audio, we think, all right, how are they going to use this when we're fired? I think what we should do, can we post this audio on our website and then have people remix it? Yeah. Because already people are saying, you know, well, Steve uh, wrote down that we need to add chainsaw sound effects to it. <laughs> I think and Drew could do a great job with it, uh, mixing it into into a song. But, yeah, the listeners, uh, get some chainsaw, some maybe some audio of uh, uh, Leatherface 
grunting, yeah. things like that you, would be hysterical. You know what kind of contest I can, because Patrice is right, I, I can't. Like, my idea of fun in the studio now is we're having some people in to play jacks. <laughs> we're going <gonna>, to <laughs> yeah. see who can roll that marble the farthest. <laughs> they can fly no more. Yeah, that's, why, that's why it's like when y'all came to the, to, to the free FM, I'm like... People are like, hey, when are you going to go on? I, <clears throat> I said, I don't know, man. When they have... I don't know. I'm not in a big rush because I got to sit here and figure out how to say doo-doo and... <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something. You can kiss my... Uh, the <laughs> things that make sperm come out and the... My bum. My bum. My... Yeah. <laughs> kiss, kiss my earlobe, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> kiss my fanny. Let, let's go to the phone. Sure Look at your faces when I said sperm. Y'all were like... Yeah, it's like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I can't say that. Nah. <laughs> uh, maybe. Who knows? We'll find out later when we do the dump report. Oh, God. Sheridan in Florida. What's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey, man. Hey, listen. I'm a police officer here in Florida, and what you're doing right now, don't worry about getting fired. Worry about going to prison. Really? Yeah, there's a crime in Florida called false imprisonment. Well, we don't oh. live in Florida. That's right, fella. What? First of all, it was real imprisonment, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> she false was not allowed to leave. But yeah, until we got the proper screams out of her for our radio look, guys, show. Look, did you hear what he just said? What? He's going to try to turn this into a nigga get arrested. A crime. <laughs> right. Like, you guys essentially captured her yesterday, but he goes, now Patrice is there laughing with you now. Yeah. <laughs> There's a crime in Florida called uh, nigga within three feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bring it to me. I'm an innocent bystander. Yeah. This was yesterday. Well, there's a crime call. Nigga was in the past. He wasn't there, but he's here today. Listen to it. Nate in Brooklyn. Nate. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, jerk. The only thing missing from that audio was Opie singing Singing in the Rain while beating up her elderly <laughs> husband. Yeah. yeah putting a ball in his mouth. Very well, little brother. Very well. <laughs> and, a, and a giant statue of a thing. Yes. <laughs> My wife had her hair cut off in a terrible <laughs> clipping incident on the radio. Radio C. <laughs> the doctors told me it was the barber shop, but I knew what it was. <laughs> Take some of the modern age. Poor, poor girl. Let's cut hair, me droogies. <laughs> <laughs> what a great uh, movie that was. Uh, yeah. It oh, was goodness. quite a sight to behold with me Gullivers. What's up? They're showing the old picture of Patty. Who is she with? That we put the same outfit on Patty. Oh right. And the other girl, the same sexy outfit on uh, both. Of them. Some whore that came in. <laughs> Patty actually looks now. It's supposed uh, to be a sexy outfit. It's all lace. And you could see a thong through it, and oh. and the front is has two openings where her cleavage should be, oh. and it's her with a ball shaped head. I swear this looks like something if you went into a time machine, <laughs> three billion years in the future, this is what our society would look like. It's the Star Trek hiney headed aliens. She looks like Patrick Stewart. <laughs> no, Patrick no Stewart. she looks like Matthew Modine from Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you get everyone in trouble, Leonard. <laughs> And by the show way, show me your war face. <laughs> what idiot Hard working for this show? Man. What idiot working for this show circled Patty like we wouldn't know which one to look at? <laughs> right. We have a paper. Patty is circled like we might go. Which one shit is Patty? <laughs> oh, that is just. <laughs> we did it one time. Where did we sh shave her head once in the studio and once on the pitcher's mound. Yeah. During our softball game. Hey, are game. we doing the celebrity uh, softball game this Getting year? Getting a lot of requests for it. A lot of people are saying we ought to do the softball game again. Uh, yeah, we did it at uh, Newark. Uh, Bear Stadium. I don't think they'll have us back. In Newark and both those softball game. It was softball game slash riot. Okay, we're looking for a place to have our celebrity uh, softball game. Just plugged it very well for a place yeah. now that we're looking. Uh, six thousand. <laughs> right, I mean a scream. Fun. We need a place that holds six thousand drunks. They will drink a lot of beer, so your beer sales will be ridiculous. Girls will be flashing. Girls will be almost completely nude. Uh, there could be some sexual assaults. And there may be some <laughs> softball that is played. All, all the chairs that are pulled out is going to like weigh in with the beer. Yeah, it's going to be even. Oh, the money it's you'll break get. Even. The Money you're gonna make, the blood money. If you're if you're willing to accept blood money, the rape and the broken bleaches. You're looking for uh, this show. <laughs> you're picking clumps of hair out of the seat backs for weeks. I'm looking, and at, so will the police. <laughs> I'm still looking at Patty. How do you have wrinkled collarbones? <laughs> I know that's the tightest spot on a human. Hey, we gotta go to Dallas, Frank. Frank, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. What's up? Hey, how's it going, man? What's up, man? Hi, Frank. What's up? 
Yeah, man, I just wanted to say it sounds like a like a damn Duke lacrosse party going on over there, man. <laughs> They're talking patty, man. Yeah, she was screaming real good. Uh, let's say hi to Bruce the Trucker. Bruce, what's up? Hey, man, I just wanted to say that uh, audio uh, patty there. Man, it sounds, reminds me of the birthday scene from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep, that too. Kind of reminds me of probably the sleeper section of your truck at night, too. <laughs> so bunch of serial killers on wheels. Oh, Jesus. I, bunch I just... of PTKs. <laughs> Punch it out, guys. All right, Bruce. We were going to ask you what Punching you were hauling, out but... the girl that's in his cab. <laughs> just needed a lift, mister. Oh, right. Hey, mister, going my way? That is a creepy Hop world. Hop in. Dude. Nothing you want to see than, uh, less than that door open, the passenger door of the big rig, and the guy going, Hop in, sweetheart. Yeah. And then that place where they sleep, like they they have a yeah the sleeper cab right so, behind. It's a creepy world, oh. that old truck is. There. And you're just able to pull everything out and hose it down. Oh, <laughs> the drain in the floor. Oh. The truck with a coffin in it. <laughs> hey, good buddy, how you doing? I just drove down, broke my neck, broke face, don't bend, and flushed down the toilet. What you doing? What? <laughs> what you do? What? What you hauling, big? Hey, breaker, breaker, one nine, breaker, breaker, one nine. You want to find this uh, hooker? Uh, I've done left her on the side of 9 to 5, uh, mile marker uh, 617, you won't pick her up, uh, don't know if you're going to be able to identify her, uh, even through the dental records, I got the teeth bit necklace out of them. What's your hauling, good buddy? Oh, uh, drains for uh, shower stalls, everybody needs them, you know, for one first trucker, you guys will get nothing. By the way, the body, a drain of all the blood, I drank it. <laughs> <laughs> I love you truckers. There's a good hooker. You can pick her up. My marker 617 through 625. <laughs> he's, in, he's in a rest stop like, oh, excuse me, Bruce, can you help me move this couch? <laughs> uh, would you? Would you? <laughs> would you? She pulls up all innocent. American girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh my! <laughs> Make it easy, baby. She's Make it singing. Last all night. <laughs> hey, you look like you need some help. <laughs> Would you? Would you? Would you? Yeah, just what? get in the van. If you get inside, yeah. I'll help. Get inside, you. I'll be in my arm. You need me to help you. You look a little handicapped there. Yeah, yeah. And you could you, you, that whole scene. I I watched it. I actually have it up on my MySpace account because I, it's such a great scene that I put, oh. I put it up there. And uh, you could tell like she's walking in. She looks, and as as a lot of women that have been through like horrible things know, there's some intuition that she puts across very well on the screen that she shouldn't. She should just go inside, but she turns and's like. Hey, you need help with that? And it's like, oh, no. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> you look at it. Would you? Are you moving it? Do you need help moving a, a couch with your broken at five arm? in the morning and I've never seen you before? <laughs> with his broken arm and, he, and he's really acting. He's playing up. He tried to get it in once and <laughs> fell. <laughs> you look a little handicapped. You need a hand? Oh. Would you? <laughs> Yeah, get in the van, idiot. I'm going to punch you right in the face. <laughs> how did you get right that in your fat face? She never asked how he got it to where it's out on the it's, shoulder of the road. Yeah. It's 7, it's 7 a.m., <laughs> and he's trying to, he has a broken wrist, and he's pushing a couch. Oh, yeah. Do, you mind? Was you, 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 <laughs> she a great big fat person? <laughs> would you? Well, Mrs. <laughs> Lippman used to, uh, I think I got a, a card. You want to come inside? I got a card. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he, holds, that he guy. holds the credit cards and he spins and drops them. <laughs> oh, when she's on to him and he runs into the other room, oh, I love he just, it. the cards crazy. fall out of his hand and he's just like, oh. he runs away. Oh. Best character in a movie ever. ever. Not best, but definitely oh. up there. It's oh. way up there. Definitely up there. All right, when he answers, a, oh, yeah. <laughs> was she a great big fat person? Yeah, she was big girl. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I cut her bad cheeks to you. <laughs> make a hat and a dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you? Uh, <laughs> Love them. <laughs> All right, they're they're peeking in from the other room. Why don't right, we take a we break? Take a break. Oh, Patrice O'Neill in studio. He's playing <laughs> Caroline's here in New York City all weekend long. Uh, you got to go see Patrice O'Neill if you're in town. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred for tickets for Patrice O'Neill. Uh, Patrice, you ever do news teasers with us? I I, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, of course. You've done the... Okay. Yeah, the we, have a, we have a whole new batch of uh, news teasers. We'll get into that next. Also, we got to take a peek at House. Some funny things happening House. on House. <laughs> Let's do more time here. 
where they give us birthday cakes and presents. Not one phone call from XM yesterday. Wish oh, me a happy boy. birthday. <clears throat> a yes, I am keeping track at this point. Are you kidding? Not one phone call. Elo is usually very good with that stuff. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Elo. He's probably just caught up with a whole bunch of stuff. He's very nurturing, retarded haired man. He's a, he's a good egg, Elo. I don't. I gotta call him, see what's going on. Hope he's, he's taking helicopter rides. I'm fielding business phone calls. What the hell happened in our careers? Have fun. I did it for we ten spun years. Fun around. I did it for ten <laughs> years. Have fun. You got you got uh, nine years to go. Ten years at least. Uh, two of those years we, we did nothing. Right. I was still taking phone calls. So was I. I was hoping. Any job? No. Okay. Right. Bye. <laughs> oh boy, how many of those awful calls did we get? I talked to Bob. I mean, really? What, what happened? What did he say? What did he say? Well, no, it sounds I'm... promising. Yeah, he's uh. Does know, it? Got nothing. <laughs> Hey, let's get into the news teasers. We can talk about that some other day. Yeah. That's an easy thing to talk about when we have nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one of those things where you talk about when we have nothing else to so talk about. So here's what we're about. saying. You'll be hearing about this tomorrow. Well, right, when Patrice <laughs> O'Neill's not here. All right, so it's news teasers. We uh, started the new batch yesterday. The scary news teasers on the Very local news. Very frightening. A lot of people are picking up on this, too. You see a lot of the shows, uh, Daily Show and everything. They're starting to uh, parody the frightening news tease. Uh, you see it on uh, the news around your town. They, they, you're watching a TV show. Uh, they, they butt in with their little promo for the news, and it's something so horrific and scary. But they don't give you enough information to let you know if you should continue being scared or you're out of danger. Right. Something might be killing your children that they're playing with right now. We'll tell you about it later. What? But. But he's playing with something. If that's it and he dies, I could have taken it away. By the way, where's Danny? He gives us. He gives Danny. What? Oh, no. Oh, he, yeah, he's the guy that usually fills us in on what the tease was. Uh, well, could he call? We could have him on the phone because he gives us the answers. We try to give you the answers to these scary news teases. <laughs> when he knows them, sometimes they don't send him the answers. Right. Because we're, we're asking uh, the rest of America to send in the the, the scary news tees, the, the fear news tees from your local uh, news program. All right? Let's uh, get to one. All right, here's uh, the first. Tonight at 11, a Channel 3 I-Team investigation takes you to the streets and uncovers a new set of rules that protects killers. Now here's Scott with the forecast. Scott? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then just these, right to the forecast. These dummies don't even know what they're reading the anymore. The forecast? Killers on the streets, you idiot! <laughs> they don't just, even said it! They don't even know what they're reading anymore. No. It's just to them, blah, 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 blah forecast. Blah, 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 blah. There's nothing there. Killers on the streets. <clears throat> Listen to her delivery, so casual. Tonight at 11, a Channel 3 I-Team investigation takes you to the streets and uncovers a new set of rules that protects killers. Now here's Scott with the forecast. Scott? Now here, not, she didn't skip a beat. <laughs> uh, What's the set of rules? Oh, no. Yeah, what I are the rules see. that are protecting killers? And you know the killers isn't murderers. They just say that because they're disingenuous scumbags. It's got to be something about a, you know a, a, a traffic light that falls, which is a killer. It's some stupid thing. Oh, you yeah, think yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Uh, figurative killer? Yeah, the killer. No, like no, the bird she flu. Protect, because she said protect killers and no, no one. Protect one's, killers. You know what's she gonna say? You know, stop lights to fall on people, but we're trying to protect you know, them. Protect them. And hey. no one, and yeah, no one, but to protect a killer, there's some kind of wordplay there because they would say. Of course there is. There's of course there is because no one's for protecting killers. Yeah. Where's Danny? Uh, Danny's on the phone. This here. fountain of idiocy. Hey, Danny. <laughs> Hi, honey bears. Uh, do you know what the answer is? No, unfortunately, not for this one. Damn it! Why? Why don't you tell everyone why, Danny? Because the listeners are poopoo faces. Where was it from with their uh, I Team Three? Yeah, I mean, you know, some some tiny town in the middle of nowhere. Way to help out. What are you doing today besides <clears throat> filling out a resume? <laughs> running running your show, Jimmy. Oh, good one. Ooh. It's not Danny's fault. We've told the listeners if you send in the scary news teases to Danny at foundrymusic.com, mm -hmm. you got to send the answers. Let us know what the... They are uh, getting better, though. They the are getting much, much is. better with that. All right, who needs to know anyway? Screw it. Let's someone get to the next knows, one. Please call <laughs> They're protecting killers. Good. <laughs> good for them. Tonight at 10 on ABC 15 News, a consumer alert everyone needs to see. We all worry about protecting our kids and keeping them safe. We childproof our homes, we make them wear bike helmets and seat belts. But chances are there's something in your home that's a danger to your kids. Tell us! Why not even 
even think about it. This story really surprised us. Tonight on ABC 15 oh, News at 10. It's right there in your house, people. You you had the answer in front of you. All that went. lead up time that he wastes where he's listing things that you do. How about cutting that crap out? We know we do it, and just saying this is bad for your kids. So, yeah. So don't you do you think if they didn't t if they told you that now they wouldn't watch the like he goes if he said oh something's gonna crawl up their nose and and kill them <laughs> it's giant fleas you're gonna <laughs> now if you go okay it's giant fleas you'll still stay and, right and you'll you'll watch later to hear the whole thing what these fleas are gonna do to you they can't at least tell you so to give you a chance to save your I, kid. Yeah. Yes, I right? think you're either going to watch the news or you're not going to They shouldn't watch be allowed to call it the news anymore, right. by the way. Right. They it's shouldn't an, be allowed to do this. It's an entertainment program. And call it the news. This is my problem with these scumbag teases, is that they, are, they have carte blanche to show anything they want, to cover any content, and because they're the news media, they are allowed to do anything mm -hmm. they want, and yeah. yet they still tease it like any other show. Yes. You understand? They're, they're going to behave like other shows. They should have to ha uh, face the same uh, uh, regulations as other shows, and they don't. Yeah. it's That's no different than, how will Laverne and Shirley get out of this problem? <laughs> it's the same stupid sitcom tease boop, 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 where boop, they don't boop, give you the answer. Boop, boop, scary, yeah. scary movie music. <laughs> the Fonz has two dates. How is he going to pull off... No what? You're teasing it like a dopey sitcom. Will Will Benson sleep with Richard Mulligan? Oh, tune in to see. <laughs> well, it's like the Batman thing. Oh, what? Will Will your child swallow something and die? And the plow sign. Tune into the awesome. news. Same news time. Same news channel. Terrible turn of events. Chickens that will choke you. <laughs> <laughs> time for the answer, Danny. Uh, it actually could be your TV stand. Your TV what? Your TV uh, yeah, stand. Yeah, yeah. If you have, oh, the uh, TV like big, stand. Uh, that's an old story. How many kids have pulled those things on top yeah, of themselves? That's called thinning the herd. Right. We need a few of those to happen every once in a while. Ooh, pretty colors. I think Poe's going to do that with the big screen <laughs> over here one day. It's just going to, to go to touch something, and it's going to fall on him. Blake what? stands three inches away from it and looks at it with his head. And down. looks at it. All he can see is three pixels. The danger <laughs> is so close. The danger is the kids uh, crawl up to the TV, try to stand up, and hold themselves on the TV stand. Yeah, they want to Pulling the TV touch... stand and the huge TV on top of it. They want to climb up and touch SpongeBob or someone, and, and it winds up toppling down on them. And uh, the last thing they see is little SpongeBob going, you stupid kid. <laughs> no, they don't, because the plug gets pulled out. So they go, where's SpongeBob? Head crushed. <laughs> where's SpongeBob? I'm getting cold and it's getting dark. How great is that news <laughs> tease, though? <laughs> Same, mommy. <laughs> How great is that news tease, though? They're talking about the TV stands. Yeah. It's on TV, and they're not mm -hmm. telling you as the kid not is telling you. starting to crawl toward the TV. As they're, like, putting colorful little toys on the screen. Right. <laughs> Look, kids. All right, let's move on. The last thing your child sees could be my face headed towards him. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, here's the next news tease. Uh, scary news tease. Very scary. Plus, is your family cat a health hazard for your children? Look into that. The family cat. It's always the children. You're not even safe from your they, own uh, cat. They, they've been using the kids to scare the parents into watching the news. Because a lot of people hear about a danger, and it's you, it's your car, it's something. You don't care. You don't care. <laughs> but it, it's like, I'll get around it. It's like, I don't know how many you know recall notices over the years for various vehicles I've gotten. I've never taken a car in for a recall. It's like, what's gonna, my wheel's going to fly off? Shut up. It's missing a pin. Ah, a pin that right. has been known to come loose in some circumstances that will make it hard to steer to the I could live with it. <laughs> right. Well, I, I used to drive cars where the wheels did fall off. You know what it's going to take? Opening up your newspaper and just seeing hundreds of crashes right. that, that involve yeah. the exact make and model of your car. Yeah, that's my car. <laughs> oh, my 10, God. 10,000 dead in one day. <laughs> right. All right. I'll, All right. I'll stay All home right. today. Right. I'll call car service. Would anything positive sell the news? Like, what if they just reported, hey, you know, E. coli has been cured. It was sunny today, and people loved it. Canada does that crap. Hey, and no one wants to hear it. And no one wants to watch We're it. a nation that loves like horrible things if if horrible if enough horrible things don't happen within a set amount of time we get like frustrated at it and the way the news teases things the fox news alert it's meant to get your adrenaline pumped up 
strong, and you go like, what the hell? What the ah, 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 ah. Fox News alert. This just in. And, and at Everyone first. Everyone is ticklish. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> it. And that's what they do. Doctors have found that everyone is ticklish. This Fox News alert just in, fudge shortage. If you're going out for ice cream, you might not get fudge. The Fox News alert stinks. And they, it used to mean something. They leave, the, they leave, the, they leave the, the insignia across the screen, and it blocks the video half the time. During a car chase, they'll leave that stupid Fox or ABC or CBS logo. The logo, right. Which blocks half the video. That's how important the news is. They have to block it by letting you know, we're the ones who are showing it to you. <laughs> but, yeah, what station is showing it to you? It's not the Ozark County beheading, but we're the ones who are featuring it first. You know, you're onto something. I, I've been watching the NBA playoffs. And uh, the the advertisements that pop on the screen, it used to be a little graphic. Oh, And now yeah. it's graphics that move and stuff. Fox is the worst for it. Yeah. But but now it's like moving graphics. Yeah. As right, you're yeah. trying to watch a basketball game, you're like, ah, what was that? Because you see like, a <laughs> face true, coming yeah. at you and doing some wacky thing in the left-hand corner. Anything you watch. And I've turned on, like, I'm, I'm watching Seinfeld or something, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. A sound effects. A yeah. NASCAR comes pulling on. <laughs> right. It's like doing uh, donuts in the screen. I'm trying to watch a show. It's trying to get your attention, obviously. Well, it got it's it. So annoying. It's, uh, it's somebody figured it out though, because like even on like USA or these networks, it's like I now when I watch stuff on like like movies on regular TV, mm -hmm. I want to read the, uh, the 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 damn uh, cast list. I want to read the right. credits. Right. Oh, you don't they cut anymore. They it in half, and my eyes ain't as good. You know, so they they no chop it in half. Squeeze it, read that. and they squeeze it, and to yeah. half screen or sometimes quarter screen, run through it at eight million miles an hour. Fast. There's, Wait some, a there's some poor key grip going. My name. I was waiting in this whole movie just to see my name. Wait, I want to know. Wait, That's how kids are killed at the TV stand. They get closer to try to read the credits. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, uh, Danny, what's the answer to the cat could be a health hazard? Well, you're gonna love this one. Uh, they tell you not to let your cat. Uh, sleep in the same room as your baby or toddler. Oh, because they can get on the chest and they breathe the life essence out of the child. I've seen this in a Stephen King movie. Well, actually, it's kind of funny. No? Cause you're, you're close because the cat could actually just decide to go to sleep on your child's face. <laughs> How oh, about there's a happy find. If that, <laughs> yeah, your cat is snug as a bug in a rug and a little blue lump under it. <laughs> with just... Wait a minute, so the uncomfortable... <laughs> Little little chilly feet, <laughs> stiff to the touch. Oh man! Oh, no. And a nice warm kitty purring away <laughs> that, on his face. And that purr is all you hear on your walkie-talkie baby thing. Like, oh god! Uh, seems oh, like everything's okay oh, in the other room. Right. Junior's purring. I can't believe he slept through the night oh. and the day and the night again. Wait a minute. <laughs> all right. <laughs> wow, that's a dopey danger. Stop it. <laughs> all right, let's go on to the next Stupid scary news piece. Push the cat off. Here we go, oh, baby. You're in your car. You check the mirrors. You're ready to back up. Uh oh. Or are you? And I'm no. Yes. Watch. That exposes what you don't see in the rear view. Blind spot dangers tonight at ten on Channel Four, the local station. Who didn't learn this in driver's ed? And why the tribal drum music? <laughs> I don't know. This. That's saying that black people are backing over. There's a pygmy behind Watch you. Watch out! There's a black midget behind your truck. <laughs> boonga, boonga, bonga, boonga, boonga, boonga. Of course, and and then we'll go through a montage of uh, clips of grandma running over the grandson, the father running over the kid, the mother running over the daughter. Uh, they'll run through all that, and yeah. it's tragic, and it happens, and uh, oh well, look hey, out. Danny, what's the answer there? That is, I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than this. I yeah. mean, if you drive an SUV, obviously you have a bigger blind spot, so you yeah. can watch out for kids. But a lot of the newer SUVs have safety things, uh, sonar, cameras. where you hear the beep. A lot of them now cameras, so Good. you can look at the camera and, as you're backing out. Not my, yours. Mine you're has, just a big my, kid I go, crusher. I go by noise. The noise <laughs> of the child. When you hear neck. <laughs> what you think is the squish of a big wheel and a scream. <laughs> oh, it's it's my worst nightmare. You know, how you just have things you just constantly paranoid that. Yeah. That's one of them. And the other one is like hitting somebody. As I'm on my cell phone or yeah. texting while I'm driving. Well, that happens a lot. A lot of people. <laughs> I go in the other lane sometimes. I'm on the other side. And I'm, I'm going to. It's like, how fast did that happen? I just looked down for a second. <laughs> I am. I'm 
there. You know how many times I almost scraped my truck against the side of the Lincoln Tunnel? <laughs> I'm just driving. I'm doing, babe. Oh, man, come on. Calm down, nigga. <laughs> and now there's cones in the middle of the lanes in every tunnel. So a lot of times if you're looking at the number, you look down two seconds and you hear, bah! you're just knocking into these things. And the police pull you over. You got a, like a bloody ribbon in your bumper. And they're like, I didn't do nothing. And they look at your phone. And the last thing they saw was, I want to taste your pee. You, what were you writing? <laughs> you had to look up real quick because of the like, thud. Like, like, uh, like vacation, oh. National Lampoon's vacation when they forgot the dog on the back of the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor guy was keeping up for about a mile. All right, let's, let's get one more news tease in here before we have to take another break. We got uh, the last one of the day might, might be uh, in the running to be the best one ever, by the way. I hope so. All right, here's uh, the next scary news tease. If you're on any type of medication, CBS2 reveals the one fruit juice you should never wash it down with. Ah! You're on any type. I believe that is grapefruit juice. Why? I don't know. The acidity will hurt the medicine. It, I could have told you that 20 years ago. You don't take orange juice, grapefruit juice, anything with acid. No, I think orange juice is okay, but grapefruit juice is like you you never you don't use it at the all. Acid and citrus will dilute the medication. Yeah. Any type of, of I think it has to do it's with something with the aloe juice. I guess that's what you can't, I think you can't it's, take that with aloe juice. What? No. Who, where's, where do you find aloe juice? I'm, I'm high Who blood, drinks I got that? high blood pressure. Aloe juice. <laughs> <laughs> what about banana juice? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, I, I, I think it does something to your stomach lining. And and that way when the drug oh. goes oh, in. I'm it, right. Let's go all right. To, let's go to Danny. Danny. Let's go right. to Danny. Danny. You better have an answer. Anthony. Yes. When have you ever been wrong? Thank you. Stomach lining. What is it? Too, I think too much it's, of the drug. It's grapefruit juice. Gets it's absorbed grapefruit. through because you've worn away some of the lining of your stomach. So instead of like it dissolving it slower, you're getting like a, a massive dose of Who this. Wait, why is Anthony right? Because he's grapefruit juice is correct. Yeah. But does it have something to do with the stomach, or is it the acidity in the thing dilutes the medication? It can react with the medication. What? That didn't help anybody at all. Why yeah, would you ask Danny a medical question? Yeah, yeah. Just Dr. Went, yeah. Danny? Yes. Dr. Danny. He still takes aspirin from the wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> Could you put this on your fist and help me take it? <laughs> <laughs> Grapefruit juice stinks, by it's the way. It's awful. Oh. Who's drinking that? You no know what? one. A anytime I get a... Uh, it's, it's a bitter... Awful fruit that tries to look like a sweet, lovely orange. Yeah. And and anytime I go to get one of these fruit platters, like if I'm staying at a hotel and I like a lot of cantaloupe and grapes and things like that, they put it, that goddamn grapefruit on top of it and bitter out every bit of sweet what, goodness. You know how you make a grapefruit delicious? You just, how? You just Lots take of off sugar. the skin, the outsides, the membrane. Like I got time for, I want to pop grapes in my mouth. I want to be fanned. Take I want a harem feeding me lovely well, sweet this? fruit. You throw the grapefruit over your shoulder and you pick up a lovely orange. An orange. A grapefruit is like it's like a Vietnamese hooker with a razor in her mouth. <laughs> You're expecting loveliness and and, and you, you get, get awfulness. Yes. Hey, we really got to take a break. We're all running right, out of show. Do it. We got a uh, Danny calls back after the break. First of all, uh, we got three news teases left, and they're really really good. Also, we got to talk about the latest uh, teacher sleeping with uh, a student. We got to do that before we leave the first half of the yes, opening the show because uh, this. This beast. The sexiness is over, people. We'll, we'll be doing a lot of time because she's not hot. We'll get into that in a few minutes here. It's the ONA virus yeah. spreading across America. Thank you. So we're right. both kind of right. Yeah. I we, like being right. Me and you both right. We'll agree. Two men. Uh, aloe juice? Just right, aloe juice. No one mentioned aloe juice. No one cared. It's healthy. All right, here we go. The next scary news tease. Yes. Is that why? Go ahead, Dan. Bluetooth. <laughs> Enough with the Bluetooth. Uh, Danny. Yo. Okay, good. Here's the next scary news tease. Tulsa, beware of your clean underwear. Research is a real shocker. Wait, wait. <laughs> did she say? No, I heard that wrong. I heard that wrong. Beware of your clean underwear. <laughs> You're not even safe from your clean underwear. Now, this could be that it's not rinsed well enough, and the bleach that's in there is still in the material, and then when you sweat, you get bleat and you get a rash. No, it's this. Wearing clean underwear? You won't be after you hear this story. <laughs> Stupid. I gotta hear that again. Yeah, yeah. 
Paul said, beware of your clean underwear. Research is a real shocker. A shocker. Oh, it's you, a real you, shocker. You're going to get the shocker. You're going to get the shock syndrome. What, uh, your clean underwear, Danny? I know the answer to it, by the way. It's actually, uh, if you wash your underpants in cold water, you don't kill the bacteria that could be living in there. Bacteria. So, and, and what is that really going to do? Right. Kill you, I guess, according to them. Really? I don't know one person that got killed from their clean underwear. What a way to die. And if you're washing it in cold water, it's not clean underwear. Yeah, I, you gotta boil. I boil mine in hot. Coffee. Yeah, who's washing it in cold <laughs> water and? I put mine in the coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I make soup. <laughs> and then even in cold water, if you're bleaching it, if they're well, you know whiteies. And what's growing in your underwear? Yeah, and, and what's so bad in growing? How long are you wearing it? <laughs> right, that it's able to fester like a petri dish. <laughs> Starts oh. looking like old cheese in the, <laughs> in the fridge. That is that is a dopey non-story. That's dumb. But they didn't... I'm sorry, he died because of his underwear. Yeah. And Danny, when you're reporting that, if don't ever say underpants again, please. Like a three-year-old, <laughs> you say like, underpants. When you're washing your underpants. Uh, My underoof. They're under your pants. But what happens? What? What's that? It's but what happens marks. though? Skids. Man. Yeah, the bacteria. Yeah. Builds yeah. up and makes infections. Yeah, so I mean, if the bacteria doesn't die, I guess it could infect you uh, through your. Likes through to yourself. crawl around through any uh, orifice. How about this? If you're leaking bacteria, you deserve to die. Yeah, just so bury what about yourself. The, the all day that you're walking around with the bacteria. Oh, with, with a little swamp cranky. Swamp ass. Little cranky. Got the swamp ass working. Yeah, Back, like, uh, are you are you kidding me? What did they say? The cold water kind of helps all that kind of just relax and. Nah, that's it's why. Like, it's you, like a spa. For we've said it before. That's why you got to use the uh, the wipes that are put out now by all the tissue companies. Charmin's got them. Um, they're Scott not called tissue baby wipes anymore. They're not baby, baby wipes. Wipe, uh, yeah, they they got the aloe. And they clean everything up nicely. Uh, I try to use it. It's, it's wonderful. not happening. I need to Ooh, it's do wonderful. 85 rolls of toilet paper around my hand to even feel. But you got to flush 800 times? I, I can't. And those baby wipes, I tried it once, and it was it was like, you know, smuggling heroin from Nicaragua. <laughs> like, I, I, how do you do that? With your fingertips? No, no, no. Oh. you got to take some toilet paper off the roll. A little bit, and then wrap that around the toilet paper. What is wrong with you, Anthony? What? Why? What are you doing with the wipes? I just you... take a wipe out, wipe no, my butt. You don't want. And if anything happens, then I, I do a quick uh, hand wash. See? But, but no, that's, no. That's you prepare wrong. your hand yeah. with toilet paper, then grab a baby wipe. You take about if you're four sheets. If you use the baby oh. wipes, then use the baby wipe. Four sheets of toilet paper, then take the uh, the wipe. And put, wrap it around the toilet paper, no. and then run that down there, <laughs> and you're fine. Well, you, and then you put a stick on it, you tape it, and you wave it, you make a treat. It's uh, stupid. Did I make it sound that involved? You it did. It keeps well, your hand away from anything that might... Why can't you just take like a baby wipe? It's your own body. Because they're too thin. I don't like my hand and that area only having this thin little thing between it. How about I want the bulk of the toilet paper, but the nice coolness of the wipe uh, over it. This is a conversation that can only be held by people who eat like goats, you three. I that, I can't. Do, I have to wipe whole pieces of meat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Keep it right there so they don't dump out because that's really funny. <laughs> the next line was going to make them dump out. Uh, and half of America wouldn't have heard what you just said. A that is butcher really funny. Shop. You're running a butcher shop. Well, if you eat blueberries and, and triscuits all day, you can, just, you can, you can wipe with a uh, Q-tip. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. I don't like the way you protect yourself from your own body. I don't I don't like my hand Why? having Your nothing but but a a half of a millimeter of material between it and that area. Have you ever gone into your own toilet? No, what what to, to live? Well, what have you gone in? Where do you what are you I talking about? Drop my cell phone in recently. You know what's happening in that cell phone? Flush, bye bye. Flush I don't care if I just bought it and have to pay four hundred dollars because uh, I didn't go the year. Did you ever have to go in to break one up? Never. <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you eating? Nipple. Torpedoes? Wait, Lots to of egg whites. To break it up? Yeah, I never. do that before they hit the bottom. <laughs> you never had one that? Uh... No. <laughs> I've never had to break anything. Looks like up. you were struggling. See, that's, a, that's <laughs> some type of fetish because no one ever had to do that. And that's an no. awful uh, uh, toilet. You have to be. You don't have to break it up. I I personally have not, but I, just... I've, I swear. But I've I've heard uh, I've heard stories. Yes, you did. What are you, what are you, I, no, I what swear. You, what's coming out of you? Greek statue arms? <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't even use. His... <laughs> 
Uh, Ope took off his shoes and socks and then jumped in and did like like Lucy with the grapes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> squishing it. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. All right, here we go. Fall out of the toilet. Let's Lose your breath. Oh, we're, like, we're running out of time. Here. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're running out of time. And Anthony's home with a, and we gotta, admit, with a curtain draped around his <laughs> we got to talk about Blockhead before we get out of here, so we, we're going to squeeze a few things Old in here blockhead. in the next ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, the next scary news tease. Listen to this one. Tomorrow after the finale of Crossing Jordan, dangerous household cleaning products or tasty energy drinks? How do you know for sure? Catherine Garcia reveals a disturbing safety alert that's a little hard to swallow on Cleaner Confusion. Tomorrow at 11. C cleaner or tasty Dangerous beverage? cleaning products or energy drinks. Or, or, or like Gatorade or something. Right, right. How about the bottle it's in? How about you learn how to read? You dope. How about you do some of that reading? How about if your Gatorade is next to the Pine Sol? It's probably not Gatorade. So what? What's the answer? Daddy? What's the answer? How it's the it's the packaging. They're they're packaging some uh, some like floor cleaners that look it looks exactly like a bottle of Gatorade, and uh, like some kid bought it thinking it was some uh, some energy drink. Oh, really? <laughs> really? And when he opened the cap and his eyes started to water and his <laughs> nose got stopped up, what? <laughs> that, 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 he thought this was some good stuff. Once again, if you're doing that. It, we need to thin the Thinning herd. the herd. We need to thin the herd anyway. If you're getting confused by that, then you don't deserve to live. And it is kind of a cleaning product. It just, like, relieves you of all your intestines and innards. <laughs> no? Well, you know, the, the packaging was pretty <laughs> deceptive because, like, on, on the actual <laughs> cleaning product itself, it had, like, pictures of fruit and stuff like that. Right, right. Relieves you of all your innards. Yeah, well. Right. Yeah, this guy's right. I yeah. use the toilet paper first, alone. And then you use the wipe to like make sure everything's clean. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, but not just. And then I go back to toilet the paper sometime to, to dry up. Not just, just the wipe. Why don't you get a bidet and a proctologist to hang around? No, your fucking I'm not gonna shoes. go to that extent. Bill in Waterford on the instant feedback. Does Ant oh. shower and mutter to himself? Still not clean. Still not clean. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. He's a he's, he's a hyper. No, it no no no. Yes, it has nothing are. to do with that. You're a one Long those, Island metrosexual. <laughs> one of those dirty <laughs> Mexicans was drinking beer when you went home in California and did something bad. <laughs> you wish. Let me clean it. It's dirty back here. <laughs> it, it's just a way of making it sure like it's spotless. Mm. <laughs> that way, when you have to walk around or something, you're not working up a froth. What would you do if, uh, by accident, you got a little on your uh, your index finger? It, what would I do? It's happened would, over my lifetime. Would you cut your finger off? Where you... Uh, <laughs> I still have <laughs> right. four good ones and a thumb. No, it, but but like we've discussed, it takes forever to clean that off. Right. Even right. when you think it is, you, you go to, you know, scratch your nose and go, oh, geez, it's still there. Oh, watch. Just use your mouth. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The last oh, news tease man. for today. Okay. This yeah. could be a really good one. It, it looks like it's uh, good uh, here on the desk. This is a good one. I'm scared. Where is it? Oh, come on. What's going on? Oh, my on? God. What did I do? Oh, he, don't beat yourself up. What did I do? E Rock screwed it up. No, Just it, blame it on E Rock. I screwed it up. Here we go. It's at the center of a national investigation. Registered sex offenders delivering mail. Are there sex offenders working for the Postal Service in Massachusetts? It's happening in other parts of the country, and it could be happening here tonight on Fox 25 News at 10. Could be happening here. Basically, sex offenders delivering your mail. Your mail. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but we're not sure where. <laughs> don't don't they have to go through some type of uh, screening, screening or something? No. Yeah. Well, sex like offenders have to work too, is what they're saying. Yeah, and they hey. may be in the in the postal service in your cut them some slack, but they right? Pay special attention to your home if they see mail with like a Sesame Place return address. <laughs> Or any other type of childlike, <laughs> childlike reference. Thing. I like uh, just thing. <laughs> you if know. you live on Sesame thing. Street, I didn't even get this. <laughs> hey. Mail, mail, mail yeah. on Sesame. Danny, you got anything to add to if, that? If the mail truck is driving around playing the Dora the Explorer theme, <laughs> no, Danny, no, you, you guys, gone you with guys did that one. again. All right, yeah. Hey, uh, Bob the Builder. That last one um, doesn't make the Hall of Fame, huh? No. No, it's we good, have, though. We have two entries in the Hall of Fame. This one, where are, where are they? Oh, right here. This one. How a twist on the predator law could shut down religion. 
<laughs> sure, Ken. And of course, the greatest one ever that we're trying to beat someday. Maybe uh, one will surpass this. One city wants to pack all their sex offenders into a three-block area. Problem is, it could be right next to your house. Mm. The uh, clean they... underwear doesn't make the Hall of Fame. Nah, nah, none of those make know. the Hall of Didn't Fame. Thrill like, me. Clear under the clean underwear is a pretty, but to, for them to tease that, how, be careful. Your clean underwear. Your clean underwear. It's ridiculous, but it's not shocking. Okay. Yeah, Danny, those were all good news teases, but none make the Hall of Fame this time around. So uh, I will try harder for you next time. So what's the email address to send in your news teases? Danny at FoundryMusic.com. That's Danny at Foundry, F-O-U-N-D-R-Y, music.com. And will he answer your emails? Send the answers, by the way. Send the answers. Pretty please. And now we got to get to this story. Um, yes, let's get to Blockhead. Uh, Pat Oswalt is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this woman. <laughs> uh, woman 44 nabbed for sex with boy 13. Cop predator shared North Carolina home with her alleged victim. A 44-year-old North Carolina woman arrested Wednesday on charges. She uh, carried on a month-long sexual relationship with a 13-year-old boy. Linda Ann McBride was arrested Wednesday at the Winston-Salem home she shared with the boy and the son's grandmother, who cops said is a friend of McBride's. She's facing uh, two counts of statutory rape and decent uh, liberties, and uh, she was booked, uh, and she has a mugshot here that is just Horrific. the most heinous. Her head <laughs> is so... I, and I, I've, I've seen block-headed people before. You could take a T-square and fit it perfectly on Every corner of her head, her jaw and the top of her head, completely square and flat front. I have never seen a more pronounced frown than she has. <laughs> but she has it's actually it saying really should grr. be words coming. It should be words coming out yeah. right of her face. Grr, grr. <laughs> Or, it's just a, uh, now she uh, and, a, 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 a look, lot of these. Uh, it looks like she has tape holding her glasses together, like I think a nerd. She does. She's got like oh the God. nerd tape going yeah. on, and she's got uh, this short, greasy hair. She almost looks like Lady Di if Pesci put her head in a vice until her eye popped out. It's Drew Carey. She looks like <laughs> Drew Carey. She's. Awful, horrid. <laughs> now, now uh, we've seen other stories in the news of late. That uh, hot, hot teacher, the blonde, yeah, that uh, she had a relationship with one of her young students. And um, everybody that saw the story was like, wow, what a lucky uh, boy that was to have that girl as, as his first experience. This one, you look and go, oh, my God, that poor child, what he had to go through uh, with this woman. And that blonde, that luscious blonde, got no jail time. No jail she's time. She's getting ready to go when, back. She's getting in trouble because she can't stop. She keeps sending them uh, emails. No, it just doesn't matter. Stop. She won't see jail. The judge will go, aw, you're adorable. As long as the judge Leave. is a guy. Yeah. The judge is a guy. Uh, let her off the hook. Yeah, the hot. prosecution was like, I don't know what we're going to do. Hot teachers don't do as much time as ugly teachers. And like they this shouldn't. One. She did no time. This woman is going to be in jail forever. She's going to rot in jail. And the judge is going to just, like, lambast her on the stand. You are a disgusting predator. And people like you should not be on the streets. You had a responsibility to a child. And you... Throw the book at it. It looks like they threw the book, squared her face, <laughs> and it flattened did. it out. They would actually put her in a guillotine if they could find a hole big enough <laughs> and stick that square enough. Through. It's a round hole for the guillotine. She's got a square head. <laughs> what do we do? It doesn't fit. What do we fit. do? She has cowlicks <laughs> in the front of All her All over the place. Her hairline is like Nosferatu. <laughs> She's got that widow's peak. <laughs> What happened oh, there? She, what a frown, what a the mug. frowny face. Arr! What a fat curmudgeon. <laughs> and she will do time, people. She looks like Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> she had a relationship with Popeye. <laughs> well, it's funny if I said Olive. I didn't think that's All right, we're heading out of here to start the second half of the Opie and Anthony show exclusively on XM Satellite Radio. Join us. We'll be in the lobby. Today was the first day we were asking for hot girls to join us on the walk because it's Whip Them Out Wednesday. Oh, good luck to us on that one. Let's see how many show up today in the lobby for the walkover that we broadcast on XM. Patrice O'Neill, thank you so much. He'll be joining us for a little longer. Uh, he's at Caroline's this weekend here in New York City. 212-757-4100. Thanks for checking us out today, guys. We're outside Free FM in New York City, starting our walk to XM Satellite Radio. 
loves Lil Jimmy's meaty breasts. We got more and more signs showing up every morning. Oh, and a party rock sign. We get a picture of those signs. Yeah, Jimmy, why don't you talk to these guys? They're from Canada and they love you. Let's move this way though. Long for many, many a year. Oh, thank you. Where in Canada are you from? Toronto, Toronto, Ontario. We came down in a, in a, in a big rig. Why are you guys down here? We we absolutely love you guys and. Uh, I'm making a delivery. We walked about 10, 15 city blocks just to see you. Thank you very Love much. You. Nice sign. <laughs> By the way, your sign stinks. Yeah. Oh, and I, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. So you I didn't just, know what to say. I, oh. I introduced him to the show the first time uh, last night driving down. Oh, okay. I had no oh. idea about the show, and I listened to it. It was pretty cool. So. Okay, you're new to the, that, okay. so your abominable sign is excusable. Yeah. Excuse, excuse me, effort. miss. Hey, may I shake your hand, sir? Yeah, shake of course. Oh. And, and, we got more and now look here. at what we got here. Miss, what's your name? And Michelle, I like your shirt. Uh, it, it would tell everybody what it says. It says Bimmel 14. Bimmel 14. Is that the size she was, Frederica? About uh, uh, size 14. Uh, what do? What do? That's nice. Frederica would have been a little nice. A, a little Frederica on top, just so people would really get it. That's her MySpace page picture. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Are you on my friend list? I don't know. Yeah. I have twenty thousand. <laughs> Really? How many do you have, Jim? Oh, we're 26. I don't think you approved my, my, uh, my request. Why? Uh, the know. only thing I don't approve are gaping. Any guy that's like a gaping asshole, I deny as a friend. Why? Because in real life, he wouldn't be my friend, Jim. Yes, he would. Why be. should he be a cyber friend? <laughs> hot. Very hot. Well, I've only denied, I think, three people on my friend list, and, uh, and I, I accept everybody. And it's usually just men's gaping assholes I will not have as friends. Here, I'll take the picture for you. Oh, is it photo op time? Yeah, the, yeah. the Canadians oh, right. want a picture with yeah, uh, we'll take one. the Canucks. Canucks. Jimmy Norton. The Canucks want a little photo. Hold on, here we go. One, two. Hey, we all oh, look no, at the camera. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll look stay at here. the camera. I am, Opie. Not you're talking. Hold on, I gotta take it. Again. I'm looking at the camera and I was, talking. I was talking about the. Uh, the I'm a broadcaster. I'm taking a picture over here, and you didn't even know it. There you go. All right, I'm over here now. Let's uh, let's start the walk to. Exit. So how do you how do you find America? You just drive south. <laughs> That's right. That's a joke. That's right. Get in the car and look for the economy. LOL. <laughs> what are the Canadians hauling, by the way? We like to ask that when the truckers uh, talk to us. You name it, we haul, but we brought down windows for today. Windows? A bunch of windows for an apartment building. Oh, we awesome. can't we can't make those here in America. <laughs> I know, right? What the fuck? Why why are we having uh, windows come down from Canada? Importing windows. I'm sorry. What? Why are we having windows uh, brought down from Canada? What are we sending up there? Snow? <laughs> See, we have it here. You can... there's there. Can I just run out into world. traffic <laughs> until I get hit? But it's it's, it's uh, you, you the name window it, you know, capital truck, of the world. At least this this little company is. But uh, yeah. you name it, we haul it. All right. Well, God bless you. All right. It's obvious that, we're not going to get anything else out of the Canadians. So let's no. start the walk again. Just like the, in real life, Patrice. Kidding. We no, got to get Patrice front and center because uh, the yeah, last time Patrice. he walked with us was wow, the was streets just are terrific. busy. Why There's we, almost a hustle and bustle. Why do we have no guest mic yet? Let's start working on the guest mic. Yeah, could we yeah. please? Yeah, can we get a fourth mic, please, Patrice? Now, where's Patrice's headphones? Yeah, headphones and a mic. My God, it's not always just about us three. That's right, douchebag. The city is just, every time I walk out, wow. it's just a depressing city. Hi. It's just oh a lonely, God. depressing city. That's a big cup of coffee there, young lady. Look at this jockey. Hey, how you doing? Hi. You Everyone doing? with coffee and iPods, and we certainly are sheep. And, sheep. and their head is down. Look You're at all no just to... sheep. Yep. iPods and no, sheep. No, I, look at her. No eye contact. Just a phony. Nothing. They don't even want to look at you. Oh, Jesus. What are you listening to? There's a whole world going on out look here. At don't even pay attention. Nothing. Doesn't they don't even, even look. Shit. That's the oldest lesbian in Manhattan. Look doesn't this. even look. look. It drops something. This black girl will talk. She'll talk to you. Don't you know there's life going on beyond the iPod and the thing? Listen to life. It's Society. Okay. There's a city. There's, Everybody. It's just a the, shame. Listen to life. Man holds himself up. Listen, I know. That kid fights. I stink. That kid's a wrestling. You can. That kid's. You see that kid's ears? We just, picked, we just passed Rick Moranis. I oh. told you we we're gonna find. You know how many stars we we're gonna find today? There More you go. Out um, today. Something's wrong with her legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing better than a sexy bitch with some kind of affliction. Yeah. Oh, that guy's like, plotting something. Like a beautiful woman who's pigeon toed with a bad knee. <laughs> it makes my dick hard. Holy shit. Hairdo. Wow. How are you, sir? 
Sir. How you doing, sir? Can we talk to you, sir? You got you got 85 haircuts. <laughs> That Holy guy was shit. Indian or something he from uh, that area. He lived in he lived in three different eras. <laughs> Old cinnamon disco. Uh, he had early a disco car, he had an early mullet. Carson uh, stand-up suit on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Here we go. A future and jumping out the window because the stock market dropped. Here we are Here at we our uh, first intersection, Sorry. per usual. We're crossing the street. Uh, oh, we're doing it different today. Yeah. We're crossing here today. There Look at you city, go. Man. Oh, I oh, hate gee, these You better be people. happy you don't work. That's, Imagine uh, if you had to. If oh, you, if I had to do this. And you know Anthony know. hates being in the street. This Real is such, job. This is such an act for Anthony. This <laughs> brother is constantly pushing this. Is, this. this is so acting. If if they get enough money, Anthony's gonna build a a walkway, for a slide from 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 XM Studio from, from CBS to XM. But I could just, just get into a little shoot and just like one of those pills you put. You ever, you ever go to Walgreens and you put the uh, the little yeah. pill thing that shoots? Or the I mean, bank, an air tube. It's just gonna. This is such a funny walk. me over to, to uh, XM. Pretending to be, pretending to love people. I hate every <laughs> single one of these motherfuckers. Uh, oh, yeah, look at this. A, a creepily sexy girl here. She looks she's like, like she's uh, ugly and beautiful at the same she time. She looks like the brother brings her on the bicycle for the GIs <laughs> in, in the NOM. Hey, did Patrice meet soon to Only be... fuck the ones with hepatitis. How you doing there, Mac? You, you're still here. That's Mac, also Good known see. as Keith Robinson someday. <laughs> this gets creepy. Yeah. You guys, you guys are going to stop oh, this they walk are. soon. As soon as the talk radio guy shows up. Yeah. <laughs> You're dead, fucker. You're dead, oh, fucker. I know, right? <laughs> we don't need that guy. He's already got the body of everyone. Gentlemen, of how are you? <laughs> Snapping a few pictures of the uh, the walk. <laughs> Look at the Opie's a dick. Hello, Holy miss. Shit. Hi, miss. Holy shit. You like that, Jimmy? Like yeah. Opie. I don't know you. <laughs> you look like a Russian. I nodded. Oh, man. 6606. Oh, six, oh, six. Uh, uh, All right with the Almond remake. The Boondock Saints. What else is it? It's 666, six, six, oh, Jimmy. Doesn't no. it scare you? No, it doesn't. <laughs> but you'd be frightened and scared. Eric trying to look like he's busy in his stupid Jägermeister jacket scares me more. Doing nothing. I know, it's May, shithead. King Tide, King Tide. Where? He walks for a long time. Ooh. All right. No one uh, standing in front of the building here. Sean, Sean the creepy right, nice. intern. There it is. Oh, look at this jolly, non-threatening black man walking I'm, down the sidewalk. Doesn't it? They, they look jolly and fun. Yes, Mr. Huxtable. Hello, sir. How are you today? Oh, a couple from out of town. I'm sorry about what happened with the bus strike. Where are you visiting New York from, sir? Yeah. No. Douchebag town? <laughs> what an asshole. Hope you get fucking Jeez. piped over the head in the subway, you old cunt. That guy was a... I'm was a tough a guy. I pick on William bastard. Frawley. You could tell the tourists. Yeah. And I want to so talk. can the muggers. He'll Look find at the tits justice. on this fucking monster. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> Bombs. You must have... Wow. Miss? Wow, win. Wow, we. Uh, uh oh. Wow. How hot were you in '67? Now we're in trouble. Oh, now we're in trouble. Building. She went into the building. Oh, now we're just like, oh see? no. Now see? we're in oh, trouble. No. Why don't we walk further away yeah, from the building? Away from the building. You can say wowie. No, you can't. Oh, okay. No, they get really mad. The wowie wasn't the part. It was the. T <laughs> <laughs> she didn't hear me say. It. Uh, oh, she didn't. No, she was across the street. All right. That sounds good enough. Are we getting smoothies? Uh, that that lovely lady that just walked by, I rode the elevator up with her yesterday. Uh, Did you? Hates us. Who cares? Fuck her. A lot of people hate us. Her stupid, I was fuckable okay. a long time ago. Miss? You're right here. <laughs> oh, my God, that's an ugly baby. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> We should buy her a cat and put it in the crib. Go ahead. Trust me. We're doing you a favor. <laughs> All right. There's nothing going out here, going on out here today, so... Why don't we get our smoothies and go upstairs uh, and start the that's second That's a gay half. bag, sir. <laughs> hey, Elton Why John wants they... his wig back. <laughs> How come when, when guys go to buy things in stores, they got to put them in gay bags sometimes, like pink 
Or, or God forbid you buy something at Abercrombie and Fitch, you have to walk around with naked men on your bag. Naked men on your bag, that means something different. There's a happy fellow. Look at this. I like this guy that wants to be Than. <laughs> Little Steven over there. Oh, is it? The real little Steven? Who's little Steven? The real little Steven. From, uh, from... He works over at, uh, the dog company. From Bruce's, uh, band. Well, where is he? He's in the Range Rover. He's just looking to see what's going on over here, because there's microphones and things. Hey, let's go get a picture with him. He's checking it out. Get a picture with him. He works for the enemy. He does work for the enemy. He's making a Oh, he might get crushed by the cab. That would have been great. Little Thumbs Steven up, almost. Move, little Steven. <laughs> little Steven almost got <laughs> almost got creamed, man. I think he made a U-turn to check us out again because he's he was all thumbs up when he uh, drove by. He yeah. almost got T-boned. That was really wow. good. We could have been the first Mind to report your business. it. All right, why don't we go upstairs? There's nothing That's going on, it. huh? Nah. All right, we'll start the ONA uh, show. The second half in just a bit. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, you, yeah. kill the music, too. Just let me sit here and uh, mumble to myself while we wait. Ah, this is great. Hi over to the room there. Pal Talk is up. Well, one of the cams are up. And uh, we're waiting. Patrice O'Neill is uh, joining us today. Yeah. So... This is just a lot of fun. And here Rocky. comes Opie. Yeah. Yep, it's the... Yeah. Uh, here you go. Oh, uh, no, continue eating your balls, E-Rock. Yeah, that was terrific. Eat your balls. That was terrific. That was the longest elevator ride I've ever taken. Holy shit. And then who's the jackass that... That, uh... Hit the uh, floor three and floor four, <laughs> and no one got out. <laughs> Who Bunch do you of think? Bastards. Who do you think? Yeah, smoothie. Uh, yeah, smoothie. Smoothie, today. good. <laughs> yes, definitely a smoothie day. <laughs> let me uh, let me get uh, pal talk up. People get a little. All right, let's go right to the phone. Say hi to Josh in Pennsylvania. Josh, what's up? Hi, boys. Hey, Josh. What up, Josh? Hi, I'm on the radio. Hey. Um, so my company, going about what Anthony was saying with the wonderful iPod culture, my company just partnered with a company yesterday where you literally send them all of your CDs, as many as you can fit on a 60-gig iPod, and they will rip them and preload them onto an iPod that they sell you at full retail. Oh, yeah? Sounds like pretty yeah. good. pretty good service. No, it certainly is not. It's $2 <laughs> per CD. Two dollars per CD. Yeah, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Well, some people have pretty money, much. and others, yeah, well, the world Norton needs Trump ditch diggers too, you know. <laughs> Step on my line, I stepped on his. Yeah, that guy just sucked. No, he was good. What happened? No, he was horrible. All right. Jim didn't know Little Steven was on Sopranos. Yes, I did. I just didn't know the name Little Steven. I, if you would have said Steven Van Zandt, I would have known that well, was. Take him. it up with Chris. Chris. Jimmy. Yes. You uh, you missed your chance, man. Uh, little Steven and Silvio from The Sopranos. No, 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 I know that. And I know, but he was in a truck. And there was no way to get a shot with him. All right, man. Good Al to know. Almost with his corpse lying oh, in the road. Boy, did he almost get clipped. <laughs> a U-turn on 57th. I think uh, he was following uh, us in the from morning. CBS, actually. I never yeah. heard the Wise Guys show, but it must be really funny. It's absolutely horrific. Is it bad? Yeah, it's really, really bad. Is there, a, bad. is there a lot of, like, we're going to whack you jokes? Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh -huh. don't do that. You might uh, roll over, Goomba. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, a lot of that. Oof. A lot of, hey, hey oh. Whoa, 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 hey. You know hey. what happened that time with the Russian? Hey, huh? Oof. Yeah, did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do some things today. We got some uh, gumads coming in. Hey, hey oh. oh. Oh, look at <laughs> look at the pasta bajals on her. Hey, hey oh. 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 <laughs> ah. Shut up. <laughs> hey, we're sitting here with Patrice O'Neill, our favorite moulin yarn. Oh, hey. ah. oh. And for those of you that don't know, it's, it's an eggplant. Oh. Is what they call it. <laughs> hey, what? Oh. 
Hey. Pass, pass the gobble Yeah, that uh, dumb food talk. Hey, when I was growing up, really, you ate a lot? I'm you sure know what's good. A nice calamar. I'll be the calamar. Hey, don't eat uh, that. We're going to whack you. And then uh, <laughs> you put a little uh, rigot, rigot on there. And uh, what you, you get, uh, you stir uh, the sauce. <laughs> what kind of show is that? <laughs> hey, huh? Hey, get out of here. It's Johnny, Johnny Fat Feet. Oh. Oh. Doing traffic. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> worse. Where's the dump report? Don't we immediately get that? Maybe there were no dumps today. N impossible. Yesterday, what? There was 22 dumps on the first half of the show? Just 22. Just your filthy cake evacuation. <laughs> Dude, man. Did you smell it in the bathroom? I certainly didn't. Why not? I didn't. I smell yours. I know. Sorry. Uh, on purpose? Not on purpose, but... I didn't need a rod during the show. <laughs> Let's say hi to A Block. A Block! What's happening, boys? What's up, A Block? Yeah, I, say, I, I want to thank you very much for cussing your asses off yesterday. I won $100. Uh, we had an over-under 20 dumps. Wow. You guys had 22 New World Record. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got $50 on Patrice O'Neal getting dumped for saying sperm thingies. Uh, today, let's hear yeah. it. Punch it out, boys. Well, we don't we don't have the sheet yet. Yeah, we'll. Uh... Bobby, I'm I'm giddy with anticipation, waiting on it. All right, they're uh, printing it out as we speak, so we we'll have that in moments here. Also, on this half of the Opie and Anthony show, we got to a couple of really interesting clips from House House on an <laughs> all new house. Just when I, when I think um, when we make fun of it. That we've gotten ri ridiculous and maybe taken it a little over the top. Uh, no, you see an ad for House or or uh, an episode, and it's so ridiculous that there is no realism on this show. And I'm hearing all the time, dude, you just got to watch it. It's a great show. I don't like those shows. I don't watch medical shows because I always think I have it, whatever they have. And House is the worst because, as we've said in the past, it starts off as, as something nothing. <laughs> she came in with a scalp itch. It turned into a brain tumor working its way through her skull as she's convulsing. What did House do? House had to kill eight babies, <laughs> chop off their feet, and make a tumor-reducing stew from their toes. <laughs> and you think that sounds crazy? No, it's not. No, we got two the good The real examples, episodes actually. are even more ridiculous. Who would go to house? Who would ma who would call up and make an appointment? Oh, Jimmy's not happy. Uh-oh. We had some action in in the 840 area of the first half of the Opie and Anthony show. Why don't we do the huh. dump report live from the Opie and Anthony show studios? The daily dump report. Well, here are the dumps for this May 24th, 19 uh, 1906, yeah, 2006. I'm still writing 19 on some, six <laughs> years later. Uh, let's see, at 7:47, oh, we went quite a ways there. We did all right. Um, Up until Patrice, Patrice came yeah, right when Patrice came in <laughs> and had to say things that make sperm come and, out. And you know, I was gonna finish it, and I saw all of you go. Yeah. With we that all, face, like no sperm. We all turned like, to look at Patrice and went, "Oh no, he's he's the first dump." Uh, at 8.40, Opie saying, wipe my butt Jesus. during an extended discussion about wiping. By saying this, everything was illuminated uh, illuminated to, what, to was what was being talked about. See, during an extended discussion about wiping, there's where it happens. If, you, if you're constantly pounding something, and we, our, our discussion was lengthy about wiping, and then wipe my butt, it's too graphic. You could say, you know, yeah, well, when I wipe my butt, uh, it kind of hurt. You say it once as a one-off. Well, you should have been goddamn throw. dumped for your fucking take a take a tissue and then you put four slices of tissue and one wipe a dude I whatever. Am fucking a Barishnikov, the way I can dance around around doo -doo? This shit that it's that true. is FM radio. Oh, fuck I you. am such a pro at it. It's true, Patrice. It's true. That it is ridiculous. It's true. I'm it's a, true. I'm a godsend to FM radio. Anthony people. can talk about shit like no one else. I can. Give me a subject. I'll talk about it on FM, no matter how graphic. Baby I fucking. 
Baby fucking. Jesus. You take a baby ass and you fuck it. Way to go, Ant. Way to straighten me out. <laughs> what? At 842, what's coming out of you? Greek statue arms? That was such a now, great line. Now, it's such a funny fucking line. That never should have been dumped. And, uh, again, I think it was because we were talking about it so much, but, yeah, I don't see how that... That's, that's but, one that I don't really agree with. This guy's a fucking with. panicky girl on the dump button. But we did save uh, Patrice's... He, he wipes whole pieces of steak out of his butt. <laughs> yeah, thank God. You were ready to destroy that great line, and we saved your ass. <laughs> and I think if you said, what's coming out of you, Greek statue arms, and... but. The 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 place we were describing was the ass. We were doing a lot of ass talk there. It was about shitting. It was about wiping. So when you say what's coming out of you, you th could then put together that you mean coming out of your ass. What, if, I, what, if, what if we meant yeah. spiritually? Uh, oh, very good. Spiritually out your ass? Is that what like, you mean? Spiritually, what? I know spiritually a Greek <laughs> statue <laughs> arm is coming out of your your, your, yeah, he's spiritually your aura. Out of Greek statue arm. <laughs> and uh, at 842, again, squishing it. Oh, no. Norton talking about Anthony wiping his butt. Did I say squishing it? Squishing it. I don't remember you saying uh, I don't either. Saying, uh, squishing it. It's something squishy. I Four probably, dumps today. I was probably talking about when Ope was tap dancing on it and they missed on the, the dump guy. Misread it and thinking I was referring to what you were saying when I was getting to another line about right, so something who's, else. Who's, That's who's, way to go. Who's in there deciding that it's being dumped? Uh, fucking uh, Cardinal O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think we've done pretty well. When you when, losing, when you look, we're losing uh, some battles here and there, but in general, out of I everything thought, that was I mean, said, we said sperm three or four times on that show, and all the other sperm references were fine. Yeah. So, and well, we saved your steak line. Racism. Four things. Yeah. That's not bad. Throughout dog the is right. course of the whole thing, not bad. We're not going to win every single one. I know, but I like to win. <laughs> Let's go to winning is Carol in Indiana. Carol? Hello. Hi, Carol. Hi. <laughs> well, I think you're um, underrating the house program because last week's episode had two references to blowjobs. And on this week's episode, they had an exploding testicle. Yeah, well, this seems to be what's going on on House, but this is the the stuff that people say makes House great. I say makes it awful. Why? Every goddamn episode doesn't have to be. Can the guy treat a little case of the sniffles <laughs> and just have the person go home okay? Does it always have to be somebody comes in with maybe, uh, I don't know, an earache and their balls explode? Well, it makes for good television. No, it doesn't. It makes for fake, hypochondriac-inducing house <laughs> drama. It's obviously good TV. It's one of the top-rated shows on TV. I know. And, and it's amusing. No, um, it's not. All right, we got some uh, house clips. We got two quick ones today. Now, Dan, Dan, is in. Dan uh, you're familiar with these clips? Uh, yeah, I caught house. House yeah. is great to watch when you're sort of on your computer and you can just listen for the squishes. <laughs> is <laughs> and you, that it? Yeah. And you know you've hit uh, pay dirt. Pay dirt. Um, yeah. It was a little bit weird. In this one, he uh, gets shot at the start. House gets shot. House gets shot. By some former patient, I guess. Of course. Who wouldn't shoot this guy? And you go in with no nothing. You come out, uh, you got all kinds of diseases. But there's also this uh, other guy who came in originally, the actual sort of patient person, um, whose tongue has swollen up to the point where he like can't talk or barely breathe. Don't you wish that would happen to our own E Rock? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the matter? He just walked in. He gave me the look like I just walked in. You hurt his feelings. Just want his tongue to swell up till he can't breathe. Someone had to start the show today. Whoa, whoa, whoa! The poor kid is working hard. He does nothing but give, and then. Give us more. And all we do is hurt him. Hey, what you're the fuck? You're going to make me start thinking about what I did here. You all right, Eric? I'm fine. Ah, smoothies! Smoothies are here. Thanks, Ken. Stop the program. Smoothies are no, no, here. No, no. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. You said you want something more substantial. Shut up with your lying. I wanted a smoothie. <laughs> well, you didn't say it. And now what? it's too late. Jimmy's a liar. I'm not a liar. You lie I wanted four smoothies. Why is Patrice... Drawing wow, Patrice is drawing three-dimensional <laughs> Stop sucking up, Stop <laughs> sucking up to Anthony. With you? <laughs> that is really nice. Just, I do. It's a weird thing I do. I just. I, it's I, a good job. I, well, sometimes in the tub, I just like when I'm cleaning the tub and I have the uh, scrubbing bubbles. I just yeah. I just draw a swastika. Rub -a -dub -dub. I don't know. Swastika is <laughs> in the tub. I don't know. It's just like you know. I draw a scrubbing bubble swastika. Just, I used to draw those Jesus. on my sneakers. Remember the old sneakers? <laughs> How'd you but see it from there? 
<laughs> How can you not? Jesus. It's a fluorescent <laughs> marker. <laughs> Remember this, the old sneakers that had the wooden, like, uh, wooden, wooden, <laughs> the rubber half a moon you had wooden kind sneakers? of thing? Wooden sneakers. I lived in Holland. <laughs> the rubber, like, half a moon thing over the toe area. Mm -hmm. They're your basic sneaker. I used to draw swastikas on those when I was, like, in first grade. Uh, and a teacher came up to me in the in the playground and started yelling at me like a mad woman. And, and she goes, those are swastikas. I, I went, oh, really? And and she, she said, do you know what those represent? And I said, no, I don't. I, she goes, why did you draw it on your sneaker? I said, because they look cool. And, and And that was it. I didn't know any ideology. I didn't know the horror, the thing. This teacher assumed that in first grade, I'm going to know that it, it it is a symbol of, of terror and horror uh, and not just a symbol that kind of looked cool to a first grader. What's your excuse now? <laughs> it's kind of sad. That's still kind of, a lot that of stuff symbol like that kind of like, looked great. You know, the devil worshiping symbol mm -hmm. is like a, it's a cool thing to look to draw and It's actually a with. Southeast Asian... Um, symbol for peace. Yeah, it back started before the Nazis peace picked symbol. it up, and the American Indians also used it mm -hmm. as a peace type symbol. Hitler just was a Hitler mother just wrecked Hitler. a bunch of stuff. The little mustache, the swastika, ruined it all. Good the thing he eagle. didn't have them go do the thumbs up. We wouldn't be able to do that today. Fonzie would have been considered a racist. If he lived, he would have. Hey, Jews! <laughs> if he lived, he would have. If he lived, he would have destroyed the smiley face. <laughs> we gave him enough time. <laughs> hey, Fonzie, what are you doing tonight? Killing the Bernstein twins. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> and instead of a, a jukebox, he just, he's hitting a Jew right in the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. what is this? Knocking Jamaica off. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Sing, Jaime. <laughs> <laughs> instead of jumping the shark, he just throws a Jew right in with the shark. <laughs> yeah, he's hitting the or he Jew jumps a Jew box. He jumps a Jew lawyer and calls it a shark. <laughs> hey! Hey! hey. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, hey, hey. Don't ruin our American institutions like the Fonz like that. Hey, Bosley, you're a Jew, right? Hey, hey, Bosley. That's a Jew name, Bosley. Bosley Steen. Hey, you fucking hey. Jew. Hey. Hey, Arnold, you know what he is. Hey. Look at that nose. Who you think burned down his fucking diner? Hey. I'd rather have the fucking goo on it than this fucking Jew. Hey, Del Vecchio, my balls. Hey! You ain't Italian. You Jew. <laughs> you <a> Jew. <laughs> I'll tell you about happy days before the Jews got here. Hey! Hey! You talk about happy fucking days. Hey! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he pulls out a he pulls he pulls out a big stick and pretends he's gonna club one of the Jews and then combs his hair with it. <laughs> and his best, his, his best friend is Richie Can Eat a Ham. <laughs> can eat a ham. You're an ass. Richie Can Eat a Ham. Hey. Hey. hey, it's Ralph Mouth and his friend Moxie. <laughs> hey, Ralph, shoot that Jew in the face. I still got it. <laughs> My foreskin, Fonz. I still got it. I still got it. <laughs> hey, short kike. <laughs> short kike. Oh, my God. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, there you go. He just ripped apart the font as a racist. Oy vey! Oy vey! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Fonz. Your real name is Winkler. Hey. 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 Keep it on the QT. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are we back in house yet or what? Oh, the fuck. Oh, back to house. So, oh. what happened last night then? A Jew walked into house. No. <laughs> Not a goddamn anti-Semitic happy day. Oh, God. So, uh... <laughs> uh, right before House gets shot, yes. this guy comes in with the freaky illness. Then he gets shot. Of course he and does. And they sort of spend the rest of the episode, uh, 
House can't figure out whether or not he's hallucinating. Ah, okay. Good, so he's been shot. Yeah, and they do some unorthodox treatment to him. Now, how long after House gets shot is he doing stuff with patients? Not long after, but he can't decide if he's up and around because he's hallucinating. They're saying he might be in a coma. The whole episode might be him in it's a coma just dreaming or whatever, right? Soprano oh. desk, yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of like fucking uh, like, uh, Dallas. Complete ripoff. Yeah, no, not like Dallas, actually. All right, hold on a minute. Pat from Winaki. Pat! Hey! Hey, Pat! <laughs> hey! The, the, the oven doesn't work, and Fonzie hits it with his fist and fires right up! <laughs> Holy shit, Pat! <laughs> That is horrible. <laughs> it was right away safe. Right <laughs> hey, Pat. Yes. Uh, did you get your van fixed? A lot of people want to know. Uh, well, I've been having my eating contest lately, so I'm I'm scheduling it. My, all... my van sounds like a thunderstorm when I drive from the sheet metal on the roof. <laughs> rattling. They're all in the shower. Nothing's happening. Duck. Shh. Hey. hey. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. All right, Pat. <laughs> All right, thank you. Damn thank you. funny, Pat. All right, here's uh, a house clip from last night's episode. Wow. I would have bet money something would go wrong. Let's rotate him back. <clears throat> it's bleeding into his ocular orbit. Oh. LP wouldn't do this. Lots of pressure behind. Got to relieve it. Oh, no, what, what are these called? I should go. She would have torn my stitches. So that sequence was, um, I thought the operation went all right. Um, his eyeball starts popping out of his socket. Actually, that squish you hear is they show on Fox the eyeball popping out of the socket. The guy's eyeball popped out of its socket. Yeah. Like, not even Total Recall had the uh, the balls to show that. Right. But in-house. Yeah. And, and, and well, why did this happen? I don't Was it a house mistake again? Was no. it someone that works at this hospital? Shouldn't this hospital just uh, just be closed for so many lawsuits? It was one of these mystery things they keep trying to figure out of what the course. thing is. Yeah, the yeah. mystery hospital. And at the at, in the end of the clip, the house just passes out because mm. he's been shot. Here's a, a second clip from house. The test was negative. You knew? Force of habit. Showed no cancer. No reason why he's got a fever of 103 and no reason why his tongue won't fit in his mouth. He's post-op. Chase is getting him up and around. It's important that you're up ASAP after surgery. Think you can urinate? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Holy shit! Um, I believe that was the um, <laughs> that was the guy, the the patient trying to go to the bathroom. He had the swollen tongue. Yeah, because he couldn't talk. An eye patch at this point. And then he's taking a leak. Um. And the uh, <laughs> there's obviously a problem. The young doctor goes to see what it is. Yeah. And uh, pretty much the guy explodes blood all over him. He. <laughs> <laughs> but did he have a heart on? I guess so. The guy or goes, just, you're aroused. I think he was filling up with blood, which I guess is kind of. A and hard then on. his dick exploded. Or just shot blood all over the place. <sighs> His ball exploded. Oh, his ball? Is that what it was? And blood shot out of his dick all over the doctor. Yeah. On an all-new house. See, I can't make up stuff that is worse than what happens on the real show. Well, the the way the episode ended was tremendous because, like I said, he doesn't know if it's an all-hallucination or not. So he decides the only way to do it is to um, kill the patient. Uh, which I goof about all the time yeah. about house. Yeah, actually, How he's got to his... kill people. His uh, his uh, his prescription was to kill the patient because if he was hallucinating and he did something that crazy, he'd wake up. And what if he wasn't hallucinating? Hey. House is willing to take a chance. Yeah. 
What a dumb fucking show. I hate House. I watched, it, I've I watched it. it once, and, and I, I have a I have like an ugly spot for it anyway, because it, it's the show that took over the jury, the show I was on. Oh, you, oh okay. And they canceled the jury during the commercial. I went to the well, bathroom, then, yeah, you, and you came back, like and the that, jury then. was off. <laughs> I had a meeting with Fox about the jury. Like, I mentioned the jury, and everybody in the room went, oh, um, <laughs> good God. Like, it was just like, I wanted jury. to... I wanted to just fucking. I really was thinking I was gonna make a. Good hey, how living. about a show, the jury? <laughs> hey. hey, you know what? I can't watch either. This edgy Gilligan's Island. I, I, I've never seen it, and I can't get into it. this. This fucking Lost. Oh, Lost. I, yeah, I, I haven't I, seen I, an I episode. Just, of I've Lost. never seen the show. That I just show won't is watch so it. huge, and none of us have seen it. I haven't seen it. Couldn't uh, understand. I saw. Oh, you've seen it then. It's fantastic. But, but Isn't it a good show? Yeah. I hear at it's very end, confusing. At the end, do, do like the, the, the fucking uh, like natives, do they run real fast over the water? Like, <laughs> <laughs> or does Gilligan swim away real fast and they almost <laughs> run the into the lagoon? I can't. Now it looks like something with the, like the whole thing is kind of like it was a grand scheme, the plane crash and everything. Well, yeah, tonight we actually learn oh. why the plane crashed in the first place. Are you place really going to learn, though, or is it one yeah, of those? It was, well, uh, who knows how news, much they're going to give. A news teaser. Yeah, yeah they're going to yeah. just tease it. Jeff the Trucker, what's up? Hey, uh, you, you got props for that line. Uh, if he'd have lived, he'd have destroyed his smiley face. I thought that was really funny. That could have been a great line, but I, I threw it right in the middle of the, uh, as they were revving up the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Fonzie fan. Anti-Semitic Fonzie. Anti -Semitic Fonzie. I, I was so pissed at myself. I'm like, man, I know this is a great line, but they're already <laughs> revving up to do all that Fonzie what happy day line? stuff. What was the line? I said I if Hitler lived, he would have right. destroyed the smiley face, too. laugh. Yeah, but the, it, it it was the the timing was bad, man. That's how it, when because everyone was revving up for the happy day stuff. Yeah. I was listening to the show like on the on driving. Thanks, the, Jeff. The, the the CBS show and everybody was talking about how Opie was in the helicopter and like, oh man, yeah, everybody, right, come on. Man. And I was just driving, it. but that's right there. Like you don't realize like what he just said is so subtle. Yes. Why he's important. It's because what he just said now is like, they, ah, fuck, I was cooked. Why y'all was revving up? Revving on up. Th like, it's just, it's just certain things. Like, ah, it was, I threw it in there bad timing because he was revving up on the anti-Semitic Fonzie. And how do you top anti-Semitic Fonzie? <laughs> right, my line, <laughs> no one's going to remember my line by the end of the day. I'm like, it was a horrible placement. <laughs> horrible placement. And I, see and I knew it, too. I'm like, ah, oh, man, this is going to be, the Fonzie Happy Days thing is going to kill. <laughs> I see what he does. Like, I so pumped. He wants to go, he goes, all right, we're going to go to, um... All right, we're going to go to this great story about a fish with feet. And then it's like, and I Semitic Fonzie, and you can see him just hit a pen and go, ah, well, okay. <laughs> go ahead, do the fucking Jew Fonzie shit, motherfuckers. Oh, that shit. stuff killed and just destroyed my one cute line for the day. <laughs> Why don't we take a break is what we need to do. All righty. Hey, you know, we try to start this the last couple of days. I got in front of me uh, the worst sequels of all time. This yeah. could be good. Oh, and Patricia's in, he loves fuck. movies. Oh, this is, what want... do you think is the worst uh, sequel of all time? Don't give it oh, away, fuck. though. Fuck! The worst sequel I, I will of, give it away. Of, Let's of... go around the room. What do you think, Patrice? Ask Anthony, else, Jimmy? Personally, I know you it's not on the list, list right? but I know the worst sequel ever uh, was Caddyshack 2. Because Caddyshack was a great movie. Caddyshack do 2 other numbers is count? the worst movie. Uh, what do you mean? Is it only two? I don't know, like three, like Godfather 3. Because Jaws 4 oh, is the worst fucking any movie no, ever. No, it's personal. They do go uh, I'm further than two. Oklahoma. Okay. Other, okay. Like Godfather 3 is on the list. That's okay. obvious. Okay, okay. So we'll get into the worst sequels of all time after the break. How about um, Clockwork Orange 3? Let's <laughs> <laughs> see that one. Clockwork Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Clockwork Jew. Fondue. <laughs> favorite movie. Hey! <laughs> Fucking Fonzie destroyed my line. You can't top Jew, Jew hater Fonzie. I understand that. <laughs> Oy me! The rest of the room didn't even have time to laugh because boom, he was right into it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> the oven doesn't work. <laughs> you ah. you bang it. Hey, hit... Fonzie, why you got on that big hat and that long, long trench leather coat? <laughs> hey, I'm, I got my leather on. Hey. Hey. Drives his motorcycle with a sidecar in it. Absolutely. <laughs> those are the exact words that were in my head, cocksucker. Hey. He pulls out a square gun with a little skinny. With the little, what's that little? The, the little luger. Skin, the luger. 
Hey, hey. I got a Luga. Hey. Luga, uh, I don't even know her. Hey. <laughs> Chris from Brooklyn. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'll you guys. All right. Yes. Um, I just wanted to call, uh, to, because everybody from Pow Talk wanted to wish Doug, Doug out Doug a happy birthday. And uh, we Ooh. wanted to call you yesterday, Opie, and we tried, but they said it was too late and we couldn't get a hold of you. So happy belated birthday from everybody from Pal Talk. Yeah, believe and, it or not, uh, I appreciate all the uh, the birthday wishes on all the fan sites. It was pretty awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, everybody loves you here. No so joke you know. there. That's I, that's that's that was just cool, man. Doug out Doug's birthday today. Happy birthday, Doug. Uh, that's all I got. Punching out, guys. Uh, also, my uh, my niece is celebrating a birthday down there in Winter Park, Florida. And uh, and uh, my brother-in-law listens every day, so oh happy! Wish uh, Kel Bell a happy birthday for uh, for me. All right, all right. Happy birthday. We'll do uh, the sequel thing next. Stay there. By the People way. are uh, writing in with their uh, worst movie sequels. Yeah. So they uh, they're going to be pissed if we don't get to it. Oh, I'll uh, be doing it in, in two seconds. I just want to uh, acknowledge something. I was just watching TV during the break, and uh, Bob Dylan. It's his yeah. birthday today. Yeah. Sixty-five. Really. Bob Dylan is 65 years old. 1940, happy days. 1941, <laughs> happy days. 42, happy days. Happier days. <laughs> <laughs> Spend the time killing Jews. <laughs> the brown shirts come, we're having fun. 1942, Ready to get some Jews. Better days. <laughs> I'll never get past the anti-Semitic happy days. This art is art. <laughs> <laughs> he took from me. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Let's get into the sequels, the worst sequels of all time. Godfather 2. And then they also have the 10 best sequels. Well, ah, best sequel Godfather definitely two. is Aliens. Uh, Aliens is great. That's got to be right up there. And we have to say, now, here's the, here's the qualifications, though. Yeah. Sequel to the movie. Not just like, oh, a great fucking movie, but to the original film. Right. It's a, like Aliens. To Ali Alien was a great movie, yep, but fucking absolutely. Aliens took that movie to a fucking whole nother Kicked level. Ass. Well, Patrice made the list. The ten best sequels of all time, Aliens in fourth place. It, uh, Godfather Two has to be number one. one. Yeah, um, number one. I mean, we can't even tease yeah, that. Let's not Godfather Two was uh, the like greatest uh, sequel ever made. I bet you somebody would say Jaws Two is a bad sequel, but I think I love Jaws Two. Jaws Two was awful compared it, to Jaws One. Compared to Jaws One, but it still was a good sequel. Oh, the dopey kids. Jaws Three and Four has to have to be in the top. You know what? You know what? You know what the thing is too. Jaws. I didn't still, mind Jaws Two. Even I though, like Jaws Two. I didn't mind. Even it. though the uh, special effects are cheesy and stuff in the first Jaws, you could watch it and it still holds up. The characters still hold up. Mm -hmm. You watch Jaws 2, you know you're watching a fucking 70s movie with those kids with their groovy hippie haircuts. It's, it's, but it's pretty good. You know what keeps that together, Jaws 2? What? Brody. Brody still. Brody. He's like, look, I've been through that hell before, and I'm not going to fucking go through it again. <laughs> look at the eye. And the stupid. With the same man, the, fucked the mayor, up man guy. He, he still doesn't want to accept. He's like, <laughs> all right, she. No, I mean, look at that no. sign, the thing, and went, Chief, Chief. I, I, my, my, what, son yeah. was, my son was in the water, too. Right. 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 Yeah. And very next movie, is like, all right, Chief, we're, we're going to go back and talk about it. Yeah. You sit here. Yeah. And they come the back and fire him. Yeah, the same happened? guy. Amnesia. Yeah, what do you, you forget? Right. It's, it's like, uh, uh, what, what's the fucking stupid thing? Uh, was it suspension of disbelief? Yeah. It's like you... Cocksucker! Yeah. You're now you. Your son was out in the water, almost getting eaten by a shark. But the second movie, the he had bro, answer, he's a dick again. He had to answer to his cronies. Who? It was a worse asshole than him. Yeah, the guy that was uh, looking for Marlena on Days of Our Lives. Now, would you, say, <laughs> would you say? I would say I Superman the... Two was a great fucking scene. Yeah, Superman Two. Zod. Oh, kneel before Zod. Kneel before Zod. That was good. I love the leg in Jaws too. They just pan to the leg falling with the sneaker still that's, on a nah, stupid. That's one. That's stupid ass. Is that one? That's Are your one kids okay the, over the, there? Yeah, that was the one in the. He was in the. Uh, in the leg, oh, the old lady you're pond. Right, that was one. Yeah. Um, Superman two did not make the top ten best sequels of all really, time. Really, it didn't. Um, did it make uh, the worst? Superman four, three. Well, we'll go to the worst in a minute because I don't know yeah. where that crap is. Best. Now. Let's think. Try best. to get a couple we, more. Godfather two. Yeah, Godfather. Aliens. Aliens. Aliens, yeah. Um, oh, Terminator. 
You man. Absolutely. Terminator 2. Terminator, Terminator 2, T2. T2. Has to be. Come on, Liquid T Guy. Yeah, Liquid Terminator. Judgment Day. Yeah. Judgment Day. Yes. Judgment Day. Yes, uh, number seven. Number seven? Mm hmm. Wow, there's better ones than that. Um. Bridges of Madison County have a sequel? There's probably two you really should get. Yes, it's called Philadelphia. <laughs> there's two you really should get. Then there's one that people marginal. don't realize is a sequel. That probably oh. just gave that away. Oh, well, you got to have Star Wars must be. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right, there you go. Oh, there you right. go. Return of the Jedi. Have I never seen a movie that's, before? That's, you can't. That's Number a two serial, is though, like, um, the no, Empire not Jedi. Em Empire's Jedi. Empire Strikes Jedi. Back is the uh, <laughs> second two, greatest to, sequel of all time. To Godfather 2. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's Jedi's true. pretty good. Um, I gave one away by saying uh, most people don't realize it's a sequel, but uh, Empire's the best. Wait, I don't, I want to know which one's. <laughs> because Jedi had that goddamn Ewoks, and that they ruined it for me. Dunk, ruined it. Little faggots. Hold on, man. Robert fucking yes. George Lucas and his weak chin. Pat from Winaki. He's one for hey, one. Guys. Let's Hi, see what Pat. happens now. Uh, anti-Semitic jaws. I'm not gonna cut open that truck and have all those juice fall over the dock. And we're gonna need a bigger oven. <laughs> we're gonna need a oh, bigger oven. Saved you. He bombed. <laughs> but no. We're gonna need a bigger oven. Is really <laughs> anti-Semitic jaws. Anti-Semitic jaws. When, when you want to take when you want to take the gold out of his teeth, smile, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, you see this right here? That scar? Wait a minute. You got a scar? I thought Jews aren't supposed to have a scar. You can't be buried in a fucking Jew burial ground. No, you marked your body up, you fucking kike. No, he goes, look at my number. Oh, yeah, let me, <laughs> let me read you this number. <laughs> the date, 1996. Those... I was on a cruise at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> Trying to get all I could eat. The glass broke. Cut me right here. <laughs> Those Jews. I'll never eat at a buffet again. They got black eyes. Good food. Plenty of it. <laughs> like those Nazis. <laughs> like doll's like eyes. <laughs> like a doll's eyes. <laughs> Hitler got a black mustache. He can't go under. Not with three yarmulkes on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Let's go to Tim on Long Island. Tim, what's up? Uh, you guys stole my thunder. I was going to say Empire Strikes Back, so I got nothing yeah. punching out. Oh, okay. Punch yeah, that was the uh, runner-up best sequel of all time. Wait a minute. Want to take a stab at some of the? Uh, give us a couple of um. Give us a couple well, I, of I, I genres gave, that 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 they I gave have. the one hint. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, Road Warrior. There you oh, go. Yeah, yeah. Which from Mad Max is the original. Oh, Lethal Weapon Two. Mm, no. That was a great sequel. Uh, Road War is number five. Yeah. I suck. So we got the top five. get out of here. We got the top five except for one. Godfather first, Empire Strikes Back second, Aliens four, Road Warrior, uh, Warrior, excuse me, uh, five. A movie no one gave a shit about uh, before Sunset came in sixth place. What? That was uh, Ethan Hawke. Oh, stop and, it. And Julie Delpy. Too cool for the room, ass What's that wife. A sequel Shut to? up. Who knows? It stinks. Before Sunrise was the original, and then Before Sunset. Yuck. Like they meet in Paris or something. Now it's 20 years later, and they meet again or no something. No one like cares. That. Unless they no both have. Shit. How about the Batman Begins? Terminator 2 was in 7th. X2. X uh, oh, X Men 2 was pretty good, but I don't think it made the list. You want 8? Spider-Man 2. We probably should have got this one. Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan. Oh, Wrath of Khan. That Eighth was a place. good Come on, that was... And, and because the first Star Trek kind of blew, but it was kind of cool because it was the first movie. Number Wrath nine. Great, I didn't yeah. know this was a sequel. Uh, for a few dollars more? Yeah, Fistful of Dollars. But it really wasn't. Was the first to one. To what? To Fistful of Dollars. Oh, it was the first one, and then a few more. dollars more was the sequel. But how can you tell all the Clint Eastwood all movies look like the same ah. movie? Him and Lee Van Cleef was just yeah. right. them running around. Close-ups on their <laughs> eyes before they shoot each other. It's the same movie. Remember the anti-Semitic Clint Eastwood movie? <laughs> <laughs> the outlaw Juicy Well. <laughs> <laughs> In 10th place, the... The good, the bad, and the Jewish. <laughs> In 10th place, uh, as far as great sequels go, is Toy Story 2. Oh, one, whatever. Didn't think about those. But the one uh, we missed here in third place, The Silence of the Lambs. Uh, no, that's you know what that that's, well, that's a the sequel one I... to the book. 
No, 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 no. Manhunter was the original movie, but yeah. it was a TV movie. Yeah, well, I guess there's an original that's what I'm movie. Saying. Like, most people don't realize uh, that's, that's technically a sequel it's to Manhunter. It's a Hunter. prequel, really. Mm -hmm. Ah, they can suck we're, we're That's dude. bullshit. That's so that true. came in third that's place. That's tricky. We're so true. there you go. There's uh, some of the, <laughs> the top ten greatest sequels of all time. Now we go to the worst sequels of all time. And mm -hmm. what are they, and like, are they... What's the criteria on like how bad? Like, is it like? That's no criteria. I think. I mean, just, it was it something that was good, and then they made something really shitty. I think shitty? the first one has to be pretty good for the sequel to make the bad. Yeah, that's well, Godfather, can't have a bad Godfather movie. Godfather Three, it got to be number one. Godfather Three is in twentieth place. Wow, in the top twenty-five. I say, I say, number one is Caddyshack Two. No, it's horrible. Let's go to Leroy they wouldn't do that. in Pennsylvania. Leroy. Hey, morning, boys. What's Hi. Up, man? Hey, how about Speed 2? Wow, that has to be up there. Yeah, gotta be the worst. One. I saw that on TV the other day, cause, and I was laughing, because you were the one who turned us on to how bad the dialogue is in Speed 2, oh, right, Patrice? Awful. I'm trying to see if it's even on the list here. Speed 2 has to be in there. Hey, Rocky 4 or Rocky 5 should be in there. All right, thank Rocky you, 5 was one of the worst sequels well, of all time. Well, all right, you want to go over some of these or what? We yeah. do. Okay. Smokey and the Bandit 3. Yep. Horrible. That wouldn't be in there, though. Horrible. Burt Reynolds wasn't even in it. Jerry Reed and Jerry Reed bandit. dressed up like Burt Reynolds trying to fool uh, Jackie Gleason. And trying to fool the audience into thinking he has a personality. Why yeah. would Jackie Gleason take that part, you think? You money? Just, he's old? Oh, money. He's just old and said, sure. what the hell? I don't think he was making royalties off of Honeymooners episodes. Uh, no, no. Joyce Randolph is the only one that made them because her I'm brother not, was a lawyer. I, that's what I heard. Really? She was all, yeah. I heard she was the only one like, that had any kind of foresight. Was Jew, Jew lawyer? Jew lawyer. <laughs> that's what that. That's what the new Clint Eastwood movie is about. A Jew lawyer for a few dollars more. Hamna 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 hamna. All right, we'll Jew run no? down. We'll run <laughs> full of pennies. <laughs> we'll run down the list fast, and then we'll get to the top ten and have some fun. All right. Twenty uh, fifth place, The Matrix Reloaded. Mm. That I don't was know. a bad one though. I I I, I, I like I like all the Matrix sewn, movies. It sewed up the you like all I like them all. Those Mr. that's the, the goddamn battle scene. When they come through the the roof of the thing with the friggin' things and the machine gunners and stuff is worth the price right there. No, it was a great battle scene in in that movie. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Uh, twenty four. Take out your neighbor's garbage. He was great in the first I, one. I like that guy. That voice there is two creepy. Roads right? you can go to. Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Uh, twenty fourth place. Who cares? The next Karate Kid. Um, oh, that was with the girl. Yeah, with the girl. Very good. God, wow. You do watch a lot of movies, man. <laughs> yeah. Why would you ever watch the the next Karate Kid? I just I just watch bad movies. I just got I got a thing for them. Twenty three. Uh, Porky's two. The next day. Yeah, oh. horrid. Absolutely horrendous, right? But Porky's one wasn't that fucking fantastic. Anyway. Well, it just doesn't hold up. At the time, it was, but now you know, guys. Like, Some of these yes. movies just don't hold up. That's the problem. Pork Eaters one. <laughs> <We're missing out>. <laughs> <laughs> Pork. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we see what this bitch gonna be. <laughs> bitch day. The anti-Semitic. The anti-Semitic. Top 25 worst sequel <laughs> of all time. What we got was 25? Uh, the Matrix Reloaded. Okay. Uh, 22, Teen Wolf 2. Oh, spelled T-O-O. -O. Teen Wolf wasn't Jason something Bateman. that made a difference. Like, it, Teen Wolf wasn't good enough to have a bad you know, sequel. Back, back when it came out, Michael J. Fox was in it. He was very big then. Uh, it was a big movie. Yeah. It was kind of like a so big that, teen, teen movie. Teen 2, was that was Teen 2 was, that was Jason was that Bateman. PS? Or or it was teen. Was that PS or or, or AS? What's that? P, uh, P, uh, PG. Pre pre shake. Oh pre yeah, <laughs> he wasn't in. They thought the wolf had fleas on him all the time. <laughs> Look at the silence. Was like this better be good. Was this pre shake or, a or after shake? Everybody's like, oh, brrr. oh is the car crash coming? <laughs> That's funny. Man. Is he is he wet again? <laughs> I'm shaking water off himself. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, Jason Bateman was in Teen Wolf too. Oh okay. Yeah, he's good. Oh, all right, just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, twenty first place, worst sequels of all time. I'm Legally Blonde 2, Red, White, and Blonde. What was Legally Blonde 1? Yeah, this see, that bullshit. shouldn't have made it because Legally Blonde 1 doesn't really rate Legally as a movie. Blonde was a huge movie. Ah. I mean, it was more of a chick flick, but huge. it was a huge movie. I don't movie. think it was huge in terms of... I don't, it, uh. 20th place, we already said it, Godfather 3. 
I can't believe that's not higher. That I was, know. That was disaster. That was disastrous. Horrid. Like how they, they leave it alone. They destroyed. Yeah. A fucking uh, institution with that. Yeah. Man. I don't even acknowledge it exists. I watch one. I watch two. I tell you, Batman um, Begins. Yeah. Fucking brought. But Bat that's your it, black it, guys loved the Batman wait a minute. movies. Bat no, no, no. Batman began the the, the, the new Batman. Oh, the was new one. Unbelievable. Let me tell you something. That yeah, rinsed okay. off. That was great. The, all the other Batman. You forgot about Stange. all the all the ones that came before it. It, it rinsed. It. I seen that again. I seen it five times in the last yeah. two days because it, I seen it once. It's really good, huh? Great. It's, it's amazing. All they did was Liam add, Neeson was amazing in that. Fuck everybody. The fact yep. is, when you grow, when you grow up watching Batman, yeah. you, everybody grew up watching Batman, right? The the it the why the movie was so great simply is because they took away again. D they made it like holy shit. They just added Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. And and it and it answered every fucking question that when you was a kid and you're like, wait a minute, who the fuck <laughs> built the Batcave? It was yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. the nine eleven shit where, all right, you got there's a lot Just of secrets up answer. in this motherfucker. So who who built the little thing that falls down in the Batman in the thing where the right the Batmobile who comes built up. the back pole? Uh -huh. Who uh uh how do you all these these gadgets? All this yeah, where they come from? It, it, the fact that this motherfucker just added one character. Who was Morgan Freeman in it? Did he narrate it? He, no, no, he was in the. Uh, he's the guy who invented the, the lab. Shit. Yeah, it's like Batman's suit was all these. It was all these uh, military, military contracts things that they've that they got money buy. for that the military didn't take, but you know Holy some shit. of them were. And he took them. Yeah. This whole it's the. Okay, you are you into the super front superhero movies or the, the uh, here and there a little bit? Yeah, that that might be the best fucking super ever. Other very close to the original. Superman and they took with the Chris Marie. They original took the cartoon Superman. angle out of it too. It was it's, genius, it's just a very man. dark movie. Original oh. Superman doesn't hold up. That's why the new one it, coming no, out. The original, it does. The original Spider-Man was great. The effects, though, now you watch it and it's like, I can't get past the bad special effects. No, man. That yeah. fucking movie stands up. This new one's going to be mm. good. The new one, I, I like uh, the trailer. I want to see that one. Really looks like it's going to be a good movie. Because they took out they took out the, the bullshit. Like, yeah. they, when they show, like, the scenes or the people going... There's a motherfucker flying, and they <laughs> and they're dead serious. Like, yeah, yeah. Like nobody would be like, "Holy shit!" Like in the, in the old school ones, guy be reading the paper and the paper fly. I'll go, "What the fuck and is that?" <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, "Holy shit!" There's yeah, a dude there's a in guy the air and he's flying, flying like how you would f react. How you would really right. react, right? It was that. Oh man! By the way, the Spider, the Super, the uh, Batman movie with Halle Berry is the Catwoman. Whatever, which one that no, one was? No, that was Catwoman. Oh, you're right. And if yeah, that right. was a sequel, that was the wor one the of the uh, worst horrible. movies the Michelle, ever. The Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman was Batman, or whatever. That's got to be yeah. one of the worst ones. That's I'm highly buried. One of the that. Batmans is probably in this in this top worst. It has to be. Uh, is it the, the one with, with Schwarzenegger? The when the they just said one. they nope. collected every nope. famous I'm person. Mr. Freeze. <laughs> I, uh, Victor Freeze. I'm, I'm, I'm Victor Brown. <laughs> I am Mr. Freeze. Vic Brown. Vic, Vic Brown. <laughs> I, I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> is Batman Begins in there? No. No Batman movies no made Batman. it. No Batman. None. Not even the There's a bunch of movies that should have made it that didn't make it. But uh, let's move on here. So, uh, Godfather. Okay, 19th place, Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise. Oh, wow. uh, that was bad. Well, the Nerds movie was very popular. Yeah, it was. They yeah. go to, uh, on spring break, I guess, in yeah. that one. We can at Bernie's 2 has got to be in there. We can at Bernie's 2. Well, uh, it couldn't be. Did I miss it? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, worst sequels of all time, number five. Thank you, E-Rock, Batman, and Robin. Uh, 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, George Clooney. Clooney. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and Schwarzenegger's and that's, Mr. Yeah, Freeze. That's I'm so o Uma Thurman. As, yeah. as, as, they just... They just, uh, yeah, they just yeah, I missed out. that. It's in fifth place. I'm so glad it didn't work when they tried to put a different Batman every time. Fucking assholes. Well, what's his name playing the Batman uh, in Batman Returns? Uh, dude from yeah. American Psycho, forget his freaking name. Christian Bale, Michael thank Bale. you. Christian, Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. Yeah. Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Uh, 18th place, <laughs> worst sequels of all time, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, I loved all the uh, Planet of the Apes. Yeah, me too. Ah, no. Bad, that was, is this the one no, where they had the bad costumes? No, that's the one where they were fighting. They had conquered. Because uh, conquer, battle, wait, con um... 
What's the there one? Was, there was, there was Planet of the Apes. Up, it was Planet of the Apes. Then there's Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Beneath the Planet of the Apes was the third one. That was the second one. Beneath. Yes, that was the one where Charlton Heston was taken. They yeah. took the He died. He was in it he for died. eight seconds. Yeah. And they killed the and motherfucker. And then uh, Tony Franciosa uh, was the guy that shot. Uh, uh, he was the other How guy. How the hell do you know went, his name? That went to get. Uh, How the he hell do you <laughs> know his name? I would just say some dude that kind of looks like Charlton Heston. Another, dude, Tony Franciosa or James Franciscus. But he was, no, he, Tony was he was big back then though. That guy. Yeah. He was in a lot of those goofy movies back then. He was in Long Street. He was playing the, a blind detective. He was the home Charlton Heston. Like if you couldn't get Charlton, yeah, you got. He, he, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be in Ten Commandments. He, he would be in Seven Commandments. Then there was the Planet of the Apes where Cornelius and uh, uh, what's his name Zira, what's the name Zira, uh, somehow got the ship to work, flew, went back in time. That, and that was the five. one. There was five of them. Oh fucking yeah, oh, yeah. And least. then there oh, was and then there was Conquest for the Planet of the Apes. Conquest was the best one. That was the one where the uh, apes uh, rose up rose and, and, and uh, Planet of the Apes yeah. Vegas vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Viva Viva Los Ape. <laughs> Viva where, Los where Stephen Baldwin played uh, Cornelius. <laughs> Planet of the Apes Part Two. <laughs> God, there's eleven listed here. Yeah, but some of them are TV uh, movies. Yeah, a bunch so of what's TV the one where the, where the they, it was after Conquer was the worst one. That's the one that's. It was yeah. Conquest and Battle, it was battle the Force. And the anti-Semitic one. <laughs> Planet of the Abes. <laughs> <laughs> there was Battle Four, the Planet of the Apes. Which was the, the, the and, one you're saying and, was the battle. And Conquest. I'm not sure of the uh Battle was order. the one where the, the humans... Uh, every, every 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 futuristic movie back then, the humans had some kind of de fucked up deformed native yeah. scar. No, there was know? a Planet of the Apes, though. They, they ran out of money, so they couldn't get the really good makeup. Yeah, so it was just... Just masks they and just people had, in the background. Yeah, people in the background had just masks on. That, that was that, that was, was battle. No, that was Planet of the Apes two, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> battle for the Planet of the Apes in 18th place, worst sequels of all or time. Or the French version, Planet of the Crepes, <laughs> <laughs> where all the where everybody was burned, <laughs> all the Jews were burned by they were acidic, <laughs> acidic Jews. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> Oh dear Lord! Oh dear Lord! Oh dear Lord! Indeed. Let's move on. Seventeenth place. Seventeen. Worst sequels of all time. Star Trek V: The Final Frontier. Ah, I kind of. I one? think any of the Star Trek movies are pretty good. That was the one with the with the uh, whales. What? What? The Final Frontier? Yeah. No, that was. Uh, hmm? Spock's half brother. Spock's half brother. Spock's half brother. Uh, what was the basic gist of the storyline? Which one was Trek the, the Five is Final Frontier was with the the peace between the Klingon, right? Was that the one with the next? Oh, Trek Five is an uh, uh, an oil enough. slick of spiritual hooey in which Kirk meets God face to face, then yeah. a, then sasses and back talks him. What? Then sasses and back talks. He him. yells at God in an irony probably lost on the hubristic hairpiece auteur. God looks like atheist Karl Marx. All right. Whatever. Uh, 16th place, Ocean's 12. What? I, I don't mind that movie, though. Like, no. I wouldn't call it the fucking worst. And, and Ocean's 11, yeah, for what as, that was, it was kind of just... It was as good as or as bad as Ocean's silly. 11. It takes you an hour to know if you're watching Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12 when it comes yeah, on TV. It just was trite it's the same nonsense. same fucking movie. Uh, 15th place, Dumb and Dumber, When Harry Met Lloyd. Oh, oh. when, when the one, neither, they were young kids. It was right. a yeah. prequel. Terrible. Uh, Mask 2. <laughs> oh, Mask. the one with your boy. Uh, oh, I thought you meant the other one, Mask what? movie. Mask 2, show? pulling the thumbtacks out of the map. Have you on show, Opie? Huh? Has it Jamie and Kenny ever been on? Yeah, a couple, last week. Yeah, last week. Oh, was he really? Yeah. 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 Mask 2, my coffin shaped like a lollipop. <laughs> 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 Mask two, you six kids, stop playing in my hat. <laughs> Mask two, I want to put on makeup. Hand me that paint roller. <laughs> yeah, that'd be Mask two, pinless map. <laughs> Fucking Ben takes the pins out of our own Ben. <laughs> Except he takes, put them in Boston. <laughs> Sean plays where he scored coke. <laughs> Cambridge Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Why would you call out his coke problem right on <laughs> Can't help Why us. not. What is that, your intervention? 
No, it's just the way he moves yeah. has to be explained. 14th place, worst sequels of all time, a movie that uh, starred Will Chamberlain. Oh, Con I like Conan the Destroyer, man. Conan the Destroyer. I yeah. like yeah, that movie. Any of the Conan movies are good. I enjoyed Conan even. the Destroyer. I right. did. Conan the Destroyer. Conan. <laughs> <laughs> 13th place, worst sequels of all time, The Sting 2. Hmm. With, uh, yeah. that one was with, uh, um, uh, say it. Tom Cruise. Say it. No. Right? Say it. No, that was the other one. Say George Segal. That was the color of money. Say it. Who was in Sting 2? Say Paul it. Paul Newman? Nah. Fred Gwynn? Say it. Peter Gabriel? Sting 2. They're screaming at their radios out there. They got it. Say it. Denzel Washington? Say it. Sting um, 2? Paul was Benjamin? Bad guy? I know Jackie Gleason was Jackie the bad guy Gleason. in Sting 2. Jackie Gleason's in that, yes. <clears throat> and, uh, well, Mac Davis. Mac Davis. Jesus. But who was the Sting? Burt Reynolds? Who did the Sting? Didn't the Sting the, was John uh, Newman? Paul Newman. No, yeah. the Sting too. Robert who was Redford. the <clears throat> No, who did the who did the, the Sting? Who pulled off the job in uh, in 2? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. All right, whatever. Sting too. Uh, no idea. All right, uh 12th place. 12th. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Fucking awful. Mm -hmm. That whole With thing. Jar Jar. I hate it. Jar Jar Banks again. Jar Jar Banks. Another reason I want to smack George Lucas right in his fat face. Horrid. I hate it. Cornball. I hated all three of those movies. He's a cornball. All three. Of them. Jar Jar Banks. That's why I did it to the kid. I made a kitty movie. I'm yeah. Fucking. The hate. And, and you know what sucks? The potential there during that speeder race was so good. Like the effects on that and the sound. Sitting in the theater as the, the, they're going around with the speeders and stuff. It was great. But the whole premise of it's dopey Listen, little kid, Anthony, kid movie. the fucking yeah. possibilities for the entire... Did you see the last one? Yeah. Did you happen to see it? Yeah. And, and let me tell you what made me want to throw up that I waited this long. Whining Darth Vader? Is, is at the end when, when she gave birth to the to the Leia and fucking... Yeah. And, and, and how, how she, they're born and it goes... The mother goes, this one is called... Luke. Luke. <laughs> I said, the motherfucker, give me the, you, wait, he goes, you shall be, like people were being named for nothing. You shall be Darth Vader. I'm out. <laughs> what? Nigga, give me the background on why. That's what I was waiting for. Like, you, this one is Luke. Oh, and here's a girl. You are Leia. And we're out. What the <laughs> we're fuck? Out. It's true. Like, it was no, it was no reason. Yeah. It was no re it was like that stupid movie, uh, uh, about the, uh, hurricane, how the weather went bad, day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. They wrote a movie around the weather. Like, they said, wow, this would be great to have a tornado in, <laughs> uh, in Newark. And then they just wrote a LA. nigga going, oh shit, a tornado. They didn't write the fucking movie. So it's almost like the re he had... Darth Vader be in this movie just because he had to, because Darth. But how can you? He just diminished the entire what Darth Vader meant and the, the whole yeah. thing. It was bad, bad. Sh it was horrible. Yeah, Darth Vader was like the shit in the first Star Wars that came out. Like he was the bad guy. Kill him, okay? Yeah. Like kill the children. N no, I, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah. w what? Did you just kill every all the kids? <laughs> yes, because that's Darth Vader, baby. Yeah. D and everybody had a lifesaver. <laughs> everybody, little kids. It was it, <laughs> it. That ruined that whole adventure. Destroyed that shit for me. I hate Star Wars now. Well, don't worry because you can get now coming out the original Star Wars on DVD. Without his extra stuff in it. Thank you. Be for more money. And who cares about his extra time. shit? And Jabba, and the Hutt, Jabba the Hutt has a, a cigarette. Yeah. Oh, my G-Bug. Well, that's what they did. They, nice you know, did. You. So now you can Wait, get whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They took the cigarette out? <laughs> Are you serious? No, no, but they did take some things out so it wouldn't look bad. They made, they made Greedo, the bounty hunter, shoot first so 
Han wouldn't shoot first because uh, Han wouldn't. Shoot. It makes Han look I bad. I fucking by hate shooting George first. Lucas. He fucked up, man. He's a. He's always been. He lucked up on a couple of good scripts. Yeah, he he's a cornball. That fuck. That's who he is. That cantina scene. He should have been fucking executed for that. How did that go? <laughs> that fucking faggot. Blue oh, here elephant. it is. Wait, here it is. Play along, Jimmy. Oh, the blue elephant. <laughs> <laughs> he did fuck up. You know the smartest thing he ever did, really? Wait, over here, Jimmy. That's all I had. <laughs> that fucking asshole elephant with a clarinet. He kept, when your head shaved, you almost look like one of the guys he that really played did. the uh, horn. You know what an afro he looks like. What? <laughs> <laughs> he looked like something that got eaten. In the, <laughs> the eyes on stalks. Hey, you heard the skinny... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Jimmy looks like he's, you didn't, he's floating around in the other space garbage. <laughs> you didn't find this all creative? No, it's stunk. With, uh, you know, they're in a bar. The and piano, the elephant playing the piano. <laughs> Cut face. Do the solo again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking George Lucas and his fucking weak chin. But you know how many, <laughs> but you know how many comedians reference this in their act? Oh, it's so oh, funny. Oh, it's terrific when they reference this. Wow. All that, right. That is really a bad the 11th, Awful. The 11th worst sequel of all time. Before we take a break, then we'll do the top 10 for Ooh. you guys. Ooh, look at why don't we take a break on the 9th? And it's a Who Cares movie. That's why I just want to throw it out different. there before we take a break. Mm. Uh, Dirty Dancing, Havana Nights. Oh, the it was first a bad movie was in, his, so good. In, his, in his own right. Like Some of these movies are like the other movie has nothing to do with it, and you shouldn't even yeah. call it a, like, attach it as a sequel. Yeah, it's not a sequel at all. Staying Alive has got to be up there. Staying Alive, Saturday Night Fever, and Staying Alive was not even uh, a sequel. But it was that still... wasn't a sequel. And the original is so much fun to watch. Well, but now you're a cunt. We'll stick around to find out I know the now. worst sequel of all time on the Obi and Anthony show. I'm bored. <laughs> no one's listening. Is he? What's that? They can't Patrice. hear you. Good. Lucas, Turn down the music Lucas. a little bit. You might want to put the headphones on. We still didn't hear you. By the way, yeah. Patrice O'Neill is playing Caroline's all weekend long here in New York City. 212-757-4100 for ticket info. Starts tomorrow through Sunday, right? Yes, sir. All right. Very good. And we got details on Jimmy Day coming up soon. I don't know. Jimmy Day. Oh. His own special day. Actually, we got the info here somewhere. We'll, we'll do it a little later. I got a kind of promo with Steve. Let's all keep that under our hats. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Go I got I got some work to do with Steve, though, after the um, show. You suck this cock. I have to, you suck this cock? I get to go home. Home sweet home. Show me with your mouth. That's home right. sweet Ew. Spit your matzo out. I gotta shit out more birthday cake. Hold on, I wanna go home and watch the bad Jew tenant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, who is that? No more farting. Patrice, is that you? No, I don't, I don't fucking No, I don't I'm shitting out me. complete pieces of cake at this point. <laughs> I, I'm not used to the sweets in my system. You're sweet. I'm not used to having a sour stomach Aww. from ice cream cake. I wanna pat it with a hammer. <laughs> Top ten worst sequels yes, of all time. Let's go. All right. Uh, number ten, yes, uh, a Jaws movie made it. Which one did? Uh, did uh, three? What? Jaws three. Jaws mm. three D four. Ooh. Jaws the Revenge, nineteen eighty-seven. Yeah. Jaws the Revenge. That's when uh, the shark ate the that plane. That was eighty-seven. Mario Van Peebles. The fucking the mother was only the shark killed everybody. That was the one where it was personal. In, in the and the Bahamas. And yeah, the guy. Everyone the guy knows is killed, and he decides to fucking be like a marine biologist. And the mother winds up going out in a boat to get the shark. She can't. You, you just move to the middle of the country. Shark will never, ever, ever, right. ever get you. Right. You could. You could finally be done with that problem. Done with the fucking problem. Move to Phoenix, please. But no, she's got to get on a boat. Right. Well, and it's uh, Jaws four. Horrid. Jaws four. I guess they, Jaws three was in three D. They point out that, that Michael Caine's in this movie, and Michael Caine um, gets out of the water in a wet shirt. In the next shot, That's it's too. bone dry. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of uh, so they didn't continuity really, problems. They didn't really pay attention to detail. I don't care or details. Um, All right, mm, next. Yeah, the man eater follows uh, Mrs. Brody to the Bahamas, where Mario Van Peebles plays a uh, yeah Rasta man, marine biologist. Blah blah blah. All right, anything he's in is just great. I like him. Ugh. Ninth worst sequel of all time. Uh, this movie was brought to my attention. Mm. By uh, Patrice O'Neill. Speed 2. Cruise Control. That's right. Yeah, horrible. Absolutely horrendous. The one with the, the ship. 
That that goes through the compl- the, the entire island. Yeah, kind of cuts right through a uh, town. The entire town. Wonderful. That would happen. Uh, eighth place, worst sequels of all time. Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight. <laughs> How do they distinguish why eight is any worse well, than? Well, you know why? Jason why? takes Manhattan. Yes, that was the one oh, from New York. Okay. That was the one where it got. A it goofy. got campy. Got goofy. Because from one to four was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Part part four was great when the kid killed him, um, and and his head slid. It was the end of Jason. Then Which five, one was the machete going through the guy in the wheelchair's head? Was that, that was two? two? That was a good one. That was two. One one was uh, the mother. Yeah. Two was um. Kill them. The, Kill the, them, mommy. The, the girl who lived it <laughs> from one, she got stabbed in the head with a um. A screwdriver. Yeah. Then three was 3D, but it was great because the girl got shot in the eye, and that's when the hockey mask came. Then four, the little Corey Feldman, Lil chopped Corey him in Feldman. his head, killed Jason. Corey Feldman killed Jason. Yeah. Final chapter. But then five came back, and <laughs> how do you know this? this? Is fantastic. Wait, so five, five was is he accurate? Yeah. Does anyone yeah. even know? It's gotta it's, be. It's, 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 Shut up. I'm not even questioning this. Five, five was five. It was they. Now they said. It, Jason's gone. Yeah. They tinkered around with other motherfuckers doing doing shit. The doing girl. Jason type it wasn't shit. the girl. Girl was seven. Five was <laughs> a amb- a ambulance driver. Right. And Dudley from um, remember Dudley from um, f- uh, different strokes. Oh. Arnold's, uh-huh. Arnold's. Please tell me someone molest Jason molested Dudley. He, he tried to. Bicycle <laughs> shop or whatever. It was. Get in the pool. <laughs> Jason molested Dudley. Six was Jason lives. Uh-huh. He came back. He killed Horshack. Was his first victim. Ron Rafe. Palillo. Seven was a new beginning where he had a battle with a clairvoyant no. carry like woman. Yes, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't point out. Seven. seven I'm was, amazed because he's close enough for my. Uh, he's hitting seven, it by the yeah. Seven was the one he fought the the bitch with the magic powers. And uh-huh. she was like flying uh, uh, electrical wires at him and. He was like, oh, shit, this bitch is bad. He, she was making the floor go out and, yeah. and strangling him. Eight was New York where he punched the guy's head off <laughs> on the, um, when the guy was a, a, an Olympic boxer. They was on the boat, and he was an Olympic boxer, and the guy was punching him in the mask, and he got so tired, he goes, all right, motherfucker, take your bitch shot. And Jason punched his head off. <laughs> punched his head Number off. nine yeah. was a magical one where Jason, his, his spirit went into like a, a bug and would go into people. Oh, uh, and kind of Jasonize and, them? And, and Jasonize them. It was no Jason in that one. It was just. What about Hockey Mask? Where did that come into play there? Um, that? Does everybody that got think, Jasonized go out? The first thing they do is go to the sporting. I don't think it was a Hockey Mask. Gotta go to Moe's then, and they get a sporting. Then uh, 10 hockey mask? No? was Jason in Outer Space. Jason X. Where <laughs> he killed the motherfucker. They froze him. Right. I saw that one. And they found him and the bitch goes, the bitch that was with him when they froze Years him. Years later. Because she was, he was getting ready to chop her up and she was like, ah, and it was all frozen. They unthawed her. In the future. And she said, hey, man, don't unthaw him because his evil stretches through time. So they... What do they do? They unthawed him. He killed everybody. <laughs> and what happened is in the future, when you had an injury, they had these little bugs that put you back together. Yeah. And they fucked Jason up and he fell down and the bugs merged him with the ship and him. So he became robotic. Robotic. Jason. And Uber. finally was Jason versus Freddy, what we all been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually was a good premise was uh, Freddy was very angry about not getting credit for killing people. What he did, he was sin. He sent Jason in the real world to kill motherfuckers, right? Right. So they could be scared of of uh, Freddy again, because everybody was taking pills, so they didn't sleep. Right, and then he can't do anything. He can't to do you. nothing. So what they would do is he pretended he was killing people again, so people get scared. And then once people go, oh my god, Freddy's back again. They said, "Fuck the pills. We're gonna sleep now." Freddy gets you in the in the fucking thing in the in the thing. But what was I, happening is Freddy got mad because Jason was killing motherfuckers before he could get to the dream. Yeah. So he was like, "You taking my death, nigga?" And his whole his whole and, and stealing his thunder. You missed one. You missed one. You missed uh, Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> Part Eleven. Jason cleans out the Warsaw ghetto. <laughs> 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 Patrice, how do you know all that? I don't. I was, that I is amazing. I, I was following along online. He's pretty damn close. I am amazed. You're pretty damn close. I am amazed. Well, Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight is the eighth worst sequel of all time. 
and they talk about how this uh, this boat sinks off of Manhattan, and the kid and the kids have to like swim ashore to Manhattan, and Jason swims after them. And uh, what's weird about that, he couldn't swim in uh, part one, and he died, right, in the water. Ah, Jason, right. Jason wasn't a very good swimmer. He wasn't right. a very good swimmer, no, but, but he he's a good he swimmer in, uh, in, in eight. He in, eight, in eight, he walks. He's like, you know, he just walks in the water. And we don't get to Manhattan until the second hour, and when we do, it looks a lot like Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good. And, you know, he meets all the uh, New York people, you know, like a drug addict. or right, right. There's always a black guy who goes, man. That's a bad motherfucking mask. Every fucking movie in New York, there's a dumb nigga who can't... <laughs> nigga? Where you get that machete, motherfucker? Where you get that from? Always. Yeah, they totally just make not, us look like assholes. Not paying attention to the fact that this guy is running around with a machete and a hockey mask or anything like that. It's like, damn. Always a wino. God yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's damn. always a wino. Where'd you get them gloves with the knives on the fingers, nigga? <laughs> I must be asleep. <laughs> uh, they did it in Superman. Oh, man, there's some bad threads, nigga. <laughs> Where'd you get them super threads? Every fucking movie, a nigga's yep. impressed with somebody's costume. <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. Number seven. <laughs> Number seven. All right, number seven. Worst sequels of all time, The Fly Two. Yeah, I guess the Gina Fly Davis. Was great. Gina Davis was knocked up by Jeff Goldblum at the end of yep, uh, yep. Fly One, and this is their offspring. I hate blah, the Fly blah, Two. Blah blah blah. Fly was great. First yeah. one. I hated the Fly Two. <laughs> yeah. God damn, I hated that movie. What's that scary is... is that you saw the Fly Two. <laughs> I saw you it. You see the Fly Two? Yeah, I saw the Fly Two. Yeah, the fly One was I so good. The fly were they, two. Were they, they were doing experiments on the poor dog. And the dog yeah. was, was one of the fly creatures and crawling around. It's always around. sad when they bring the animals into but it. But then at the end, the evil, the evil, there's always an evil guy that's in, in, in control of Syntex Labs. And uh, fucking, you know, he gets, he gets his, his, his comeuppance at the end. You die. We have to get to Cyberdyne Industries. <laughs> I, uh, my name is Bob Harrison. <laughs> Bob Harrison. Bob Harrison. I work at Cyberdyne Industries. Here's my card. <laughs> Here's my wife, Veronica. <laughs> Number. Hold on. Can I ask that e -Rock, Why are you sweating like a fucking Peruvian coffee picker? <laughs> <laughs> and they do sweat. That's the worst picture. Wow. God, it's, oh, it's through two shirts. Hold on, what, what happened? happened here? It's through two shirts. That camera, pick, pick your arm up. Pick it up. It's e through two shirts. He's, he's doing the Brad Pitt thing. Get it on camera. You keep. No. Wow. Back yeah. Back, back up. up a little bit. Back up so they can see Holy both shirts shit. that you're sweating through. What's going on, man? What's the matter? I have no idea. No. Well, you're losing more weight though. That's a good sign. Yeah. That looks like a crotch of a kid that just got thrown into a van. <laughs> 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 wow. Oh my what? God! What do you put? On it your... looks like the end of Ransom. <laughs> <laughs> what do you put on your? What do you put on your cornflakes? Hot sauce? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are a nervous Nelly. Oh yeah, you you can't wear if you sweat like that. You have to wear dark shirts. Wow, that's a light green that is, shirt. That's crazy. All right, number six. Number six. Worst sequels of all time: Weekend at Bernie's Two. I said that. Yeah, Weekend at wow. Bernie's again. Not that you know. Yeah, not good enough to have it. Nothing huge, season. but it, but it, it it was a hit. It was kind of was a big movie. A lot of people referenced it. Popular culture, so. Uh, I guess. Let's go to John in Southampton. John, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Good hey, job. Johnny. Hey there, Jen. All right, I got a disgraceful one for you. Yeah. How about Slapshot Two? I don't remember Slapshot Two. Anyone? No. Uh, Terrible. It's one of those Baldwin brothers. Slapshot One was uh, Paul Newman, right? Yeah. Right. That, that right, was a right. great I, film, right? Yeah, the first one was, but the second one had one of those Baldwin brothers in it. It was terrible. It, it made the Walmart bin, you know, the four ninety nine. Horrible. You know, I love hockey, and I saw Slapshot. Yeah. Um, recently, I don't know if it holds. Don't up. hold up. I didn't. I wasn't that impressed by it, to be honest with you. Uh, and so I know a lot of people love that movie. Yeah. So was in Slapshot too. Does Animal House hold up? Uh, Gary Busey yeah, and Stephen kinda. Baldwin. There's a couple things that don't, but for the most part, Animal House kind of holds up. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's bringing up the fact that in Superman, the token black guy goes, That is a bad outfit! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all Right after he changes. He goes, Excuse me, 
yeah, steps you, away and just flies away. There's something there. If you can help us out to keep this bit rolling, <laughs> give us a, uh, a call because that is in almost every movie. Every like, movie, Spider-Man and with the black man going, man, there's some bad, what? There's no strings coming out of his hand. It's always a, an impressive Some stupid statement. <laughs> oh, what did Donnell Rollins say in Spider-Man 2? Um, he had some line. People I are forgot, also saying forgot, that Patrice is forgot. blowing out everybody's speakers. Oh, sorry, man. Nah, just keep it. That's all right. I've been turning him down a little bit. You just project. When, when are you doing another Black Phillip? Whenever. I haven't talked to Logan. I'm telling you. I don't know where he's been. Uh, he sent me There's an email. There's so many lawsuits going on at XM. I don't think he's slept in three weeks. <laughs> he sent me another Poor email guy. from some guy complaining about the show. Can Elo not send me these things? I don't care about the... Uh, I care about our XM listeners. Believe me, I do. Because the ones that understand and appreciate the show and know what's going on and everything are fine. But he's sending me these uh, these one... You know, one out of a million guys that are bitching about shit they don't know about. And, and this guy left his name and phone number. He'll be getting a call from me tonight. I'm going to personally call him. Why don't we call him on the air? And uh, can, you call get, him? can you get the post that um, from Anthony from yesterday? That was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Some guy thought we had a really bad show yesterday. I say we did not have a really bad show yesterday. It wasn't a really bad show. It wasn't one of those shows where we leave, like, high-fiving each other, but... We've done it was a just, lot worse. Yeah, believe me. And Anthony just went <laughs> off on this guy. i got to read your post. Uh, What's the complaint, E-Rock's finding so it. What are, what are the comp- most of the complaints? Well, because, uh, you know, the first half of the Opie and Anthony show, it's on commercial radio, so they're playing a lot of commercials. So over here at XM, they're playing filler. Okay, so we're trying to get enough filler into the system so so it doesn't get tired and old. And I guess finally, starting Tuesday, Tuesday, even though we asked for this a long time ago, uh, the show's going to be officially on steroids, where they take out all the filler during the replay, so you don't have to wait for live programming or that day's programming. And then as soon as the CBS show ends, the XM show is going to begin. And then as soon as the XM show be, uh, ends, the CBS show is going to begin immediately. And because of the system they had down in Washington, you know they had a they had to throw like a half hour, forty minutes filler in between shows, all sorts of dumb things. So were a lot going of people on. are mad at you guys. So I think went. Tuesday it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty yeah, good. We'll calm have to down. Listen. We'll have to listen and find out what the bugs are there. But here's uh, here's an email received from Patrick J Hinkle. Ugh. Yeah, Mr. Hinkle writes. Patrick Hinkle is a. Douche. I have been an XM subscriber since March of 05, and that was so I could have ONA back since I was a listener from back in uh, on Infinity. Were you? Can you explain to me after today how the CBS move is not a big F you to all of us on XM? You have taken two hours from us, and now we pay for tons of filler. Then they go to XM and just seem to count the minutes till they can leave. I don't see a signif a, sig- a signal benefit, a signal benefit. You I- you idiot to us XM subs. I only see the O and A cash grab, just like XMs. I I see you are uh, are daring us to cancel. Remember O and A, who was there 18 months ago and who couldn't be bothered to buy XM? Every terrestrial radio listener. Thanks. Pat Hinkle. Hey, and Pat, again, this was yesterday. He's Pat pointing Hinkle. out yesterday's fucking show. He's pointing out yesterday's XM show as the prime example of everything you get every day here on XM. Well, if you weren't laughing your ass off today, take your radio, don't flush it down the toilet, sit on the toilet, shove it up your fucking ass, and shit it out, then eat it. And fuck your mother. So people wow, aren't, aren't, wow, you changed yeah. it a little, that, bit. A little a, bit. You're a busybody. Are, I can't stand motherfuckers CBS like what? this. Uh, of are they course upset they are. With the, with the, with the, like, they were aren't... upset because it was something different, but I got to tell you, since we uh, made this unbelievable deal, I think the show's never sounded better. And we're getting, and believe me, Pat Hinkle, the energy... we're getting emails from people. I am getting, Wait, go back for there, every gotta... one Pat Hinkle, I'm getting a hundred Emails from people that are digging the show, from people that didn't, yes, didn't have satellite, that that are, I'm freaking out, <laughs> I that know love this. the show. Yes, sir. Yes, a combo. Combo. What do you think of this? Combo. Combo. Pat Hinkle is full of tinkle. Oh, very good. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Are, any, are there any emails where the mm-hmm. XM subscribers yeah. are very happy with the situation? Yes. Yes. There are people that like Lots. it. They get more show. Uh, they're enjoying both parts of the show. 
Yeah, plenty of them. But then you get these idiots like this motherfucker who is basing everything. Like he said, uh, explain to me after today, because he wrote this yesterday, uh, how the move is good. Uh, they just sit there and, you know, count the minutes till they could leave. We did that yesterday, and 11. it was a bit. It was a bit. Opie wanted out because it was his birthday and he had plans. So we had planned weeks before, a week ago, it was planned that we were leaving on Opie's birthday at 11. Can I, so we didn't sit there counting on. the fucking minutes. And the bit was, Opie left five minutes before 11, and me and Jimmy were joking that we were counting the minutes to leave. It was a joke, Pat fucking Hinkle, you cunt. I, I, how about, how do people get in touch with... Pat J. Hinkle. Now I gotta explain to the likes of a Pat Hinkle that that was a goof, that we were literally counting the minutes to leave. Can I explain further too? You fucking, your mother's a cunt, Pat Hinkle. That's right, Pat, Pat J. Hinkle. Hinkle. Hold on, hold on. I hope she gets Mom. fucking tit cancer. Hold on, and you know what the J stands for? Fuck Jew. Pat Hinkle. Pat hold, on. hold on, let me. Oh, fuck Pat Hinkle. Let me explain the other thing too, because uh, fuck Pat I hate that guy. With, with this, with this, right, maybe I hold on, hold on, hold away. on. With this, with this new deal too, uh, you know. We, we, we're allowed to go home right at 11. Yeah. Anthony and I and Jimmy, we decided, you know, people are a little uh, wondering what's going to happen. You know, it's a, it's a new thing. So we took it upon ourselves to continue going after 11, giving them a little extra show, f figuring, you know, we got to we gotta give a little extra. We don't get paid starting at 11, right? But Our guest. Oh, uh, I know. We'll get to him in a second. <laughs> He heard cunt four times. He's okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. All right, listen. So so we didn't tell anybody, and we were going to 1130. I hope there's been no tragedies in this. Ah, forget. <laughs> okay, I so we up. go. But we do. We go longer. I get Especially up. at the beginning here. I get Hey, Obi, what's going on with Ron and Fett? Oh, I mean, I think you need don't to... Don't start another subject! There's five on the table right now! <laughs> Obi, I don't... Holy shit! Are you insane? You know what? People probably think we're joking. I think... I think... Are it's... you insane? I'm trying to explain four! Obi... And you just added another one! Obi, people <laughs> probably think explode. we're joking. We're joking. Bro, now, all I'm I think... Is... No, no, I think before you say it... So people don't think we're joking. I don't think Opie should be saying this. I'm not stepping out of I character. think you need... No, no. Just step no, out of no, character. No, I will not. Because I take that very seriously when I step out of character. Well, then I'm not going to believe any of this. <laughs> <laughs> my my name is Greg Hughes. <laughs> I, and I'm an actor, and I play a part called Opie on the Opie and Anthony show. Right. But I'm not doing that today. Okay. So, all I'm saying is, so we started going 11:30. Out of the kindness of our heart, knowing people are a little, little uh, apprehensive about the new deal we yeah. made. So in, instead of people realizing that, they're like, "Look at these lazy fucks. They're supposed to go to noon and they're leaving at 11:30." No, we're supposed to go home. We're supposed to go home right now because if we hit spots, it'll get us to 11. Right. Yeah. We did that. Let's go. I know. <laughs> After all that, let's go. <laughs> it we, would be funny if we, we cut out. We should just at leave. Ten fifty-eight. There you go, shit dicks. There you go. Blame it on but, Pat Hinkle. But this is what's unbelievable to me. We did that on our own. Decided to just give them more show because people are apprehensive. Like I said. Yeah. Instead, we get people yelling, and screaming that we're lazy because we're not staying till noon. We don't have to stay till noon. Pat, the channel stays open until noon. Some days we might make it to noon. Some days we're gonna leave when we're supposed to. We're yeah. It was 11 a.m. And as far as yesterday, for my birthday, mm -hmm. we made a, I made a, a new thing with myself. Because I, 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 I take my personal life a lot more seriously these days. I, I said to myself, I'm taking my birthday off every fucking year. I did it last year. Yeah. I wanted to do it this year. The only reason we didn't take off yesterday, because this is something I want personally, we all have things we want to do personally, was because we just started this new deal. Uh, going back to commercial radio, so I'm like, wow, it, that would be a real dick move to take off my birthday. Right. But no one knows that. And so now I feel like we have to yell and scream and tell the people what we're doing. Pat. Because these people on the message boards will just trash you. We weren't supposed to work yesterday. Remember Owen it. We get days off, and, and I chose Who was there. I, I chose if we get a, a, a certain amount of days off every year, you know what? I want my birthday off. It's just a personal thing I want. But I knew I couldn't do it yesterday, so we worked. And so on top of working, we get this ass and another one I'm about to read yeah. just trashing us for having a subpar show. And I, I argue the point. I think we had a great show yesterday. And we've I had dunk. We've had awful shows. But let me tell you something. No one said anything because it wasn't. Nothing had changed. We were just, 
we were doing the uh, XM show or even the show at NEW. We'd have a bad show. We get called out by by a couple of people, but this then they use it like, oh, so this is what we get all the time. Well, here, You're like a little bitch who notices one fucking thing that you fucked up, and all of a sudden you fuck it up all the time. Here's the like post. a bitch. That's what you are, Pat Hinkle, a little Pat fucking well, bitch. Well, it gets better. It really does get better. So uh, I was on all the message boards yesterday reading the happy birthday wishes. I thought that was cool, so I was checking it out, right? And then this one uh, drew my attention. On uh, It was on Whack Bag. It was this ass. I don't know his name right now. Uh, uh, Dickie Boy. Dickie Boy. Dickie Boy. Dickie Boy posted... I sure hope this isn't a preview of things to come for XM subscribers because today was probably the worst XM show I have heard so far. He started the thread, and and what's the thread entitled? Uh, I don't know now. It's up. Uh, you you can find it there. Uh, oh, you're killing right me. Right at the top of the oh, page. Right. It's uh. Tuesday's show was awful. Yeah, he he, he starts the, the thing as Tuesday's show was awful. So important, it couldn't go under the regular show thread, which right. they have every day. Right, right. It had to go under the, the uh, his own fucking thread. That's, he's, Does Dickie Boy realize that one of the biggest highlights happened yesterday on the show he thought sucked? Yeah. Stalker Patty screaming for a life as we were singing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday. It doesn't get much better than the that, The horror people. show. Dickie Boy has a bee in his bonnet. So listen, Ooh. Dickie Boy, post this. I sure hope this isn't a preview of things to come for XM su uh, subscribers because today was probably the worst XM show I've heard so far. I hate getting the tired, used-up O&A after the CBS show. Oh. First of all, it's the Opie and Anthony show. People are trying to split it like, oh, well, they did this for CBS and this for us. No, we did that for XM, too, because you were listening to the yeah. really, good, really good stuff in, in his mind that was on CBS yesterday morning. Right. All right. So then Anthony, I love when Anthony just says, you know Four what? Four minutes. Uh, before we leave? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, because of Pat Hinkle and Dickie Boy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we'd have stayed till noon. We'd have stayed till 1.40, <laughs> Pat J. Hinkle. All right, listen. So uh, this is uh, this is Anthony's response to Dickie Boy, the, the post I just read. Yeah, that's it. We put on a good month of shows since we've been on CBS and XM, but we have one day... One off day on XM, and I got to read the old, I sure hope this isn't a preview of things to come for XM subscribers, dot, dot, dot. This, by the way, is a perfect example of a post that pisses the show off. Nothing construct uh, constructive whatsoever. Just a bullshit insult based on one show out of hundreds. I'll be honest with you. Me and Jimmy just weren't feeling it today. When one out of the three of us are a bit off for the day, the, the other two can pick up the slack. But when two of us are in a funk and can't seem to think like we do every other day, it shows. It's very rare. But it happens. Excuse fucking us. Preview of things to come. Eat my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I did write eat my fuck. I love eat my Ooh. fuck. That's that's wonderful. <laughs> fucking relax, dicky boy. I'm sure you aren't golden every day at the fucking fry machine. <laughs> oh! I had to. The guy fucking pissed me off so bad. Me and Jimmy even discussed it after yesterday's show. We said, like, God, you know, I, I wasn't feeling it. Like, yep. like sometimes when things happen, today's an example. Things are happening. We're talking about the anti-Semitic happy days, and we're going back and forth, and thoughts are popping in your head. Sorry, motherfucker. Some days, it just doesn't happen like that. And, and, and then people pick up on it like, oh, is this going to be a preview of things to come? Look, man. Let's be honest. We're just not that excuses, brilliant. Man. I'm yeah. tired of your excuses. <laughs> I'm tired of your excuses for not being funny for six hours a day. Yeah, every, every day. fucking day. You understand? That's some fucked up shit. You guys are, uh, you, you know what? You're cheating the people. Yeah, we're cheating Dickie Boy and fucking Patrick J. And Three Hinkle. minutes. I'm disgusted with you. You, you guys lack an ethic. And let me tell you, you six got one of the of worst fucking... fucking names I've ever heard in my life. We still got Patrick the top five uh, worst. Our sequels of all time, by the way. Well, uh, we better get to them, because we're just kind of going through the motions now. Rick in Boston, what's up? Make it fast, because we got Brian Herta on hold hearing all these uh, curses. Oh, my God. Rick in Boston, right. go. What's up, boys? Uh, happy Hanukkah, Jimmy. Thanks. Um, this is a dumb movie comment. Sorry to kind of hit the train wreck, but from Ghostbusters 2, actually, Bobby Brown did a cameo when they were all going into some restaurant. He was the doorman. He was like, yo, where can I get one of them proton packs? Oh, the the bad Negro quote quotes. Uh, and uh, that's right. And and uh, and Ghostbusters. And Ghostbusters too. Ghostbusters too. Uh, Bill on Long Island. Bill. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Happy birthday, sugar tits. Thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, history of the world when they're walking down the street, oh. and jo Josephus and uh, the comedian, you know, and the black guy walks up and he's like, he's like, what's happening, Josephus? And Josephus, what's up, motherfucker? 
Anyway, there you go, Black. All right. Oh, All let's right. see what... It... Hello, Vinny Brand. Hello. Uh -huh. Good, I'm on the radio. Okay. <laughs> click. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, he's going to say that. What do you do? He got an earful of click. An email from the Stupid, wait till 11. He says, listening in a meeting as we speak. What does that mean? I don't know. Chris in Philly. <laughs> what does that uh, mean, Black Elo? In the new Batman movie. What? Uh, Black Eye, the new Batman movie. At the end of the movie, uh, Commissioner Gordon is driving a bat car. And he uh, gets to yep. the building and the black guy's outside going, hey, nice car. I got to get me one of those. Yeah, it's always oh, some yeah. kind of shuck and, and people, jive. Black people don't use the word TH no more. I got to get I gotta get me one of them. One of those. We, we got to, D took the place of TH. What the? <laughs> what? In the beginning of what was the movie? Was it uh, Independence Day or one of them with the black guy uh, with the dog? In the beginning, like the rumbling, or was it the, uh, the, the, the or okay, one of the yeah, there's always some shucking giant uh, line. Yeah. Oh man, All right, we in trouble now, Brian Herda. Hey, Pat Sorry. Hinkle, welcome to the show. Sorry, Brian. Oh, God, don't. Die. I've been listening a little bit. Brian, we get a little upset, but it's I can not. Tell. I got a phrase for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished. Absolutely, we're, we're trying our best. Where's my car See? crash? And what? Uh, you don't car crash, Brian. <laughs> hey man, the I guy, see you. I see you driving, baby. And I'm gonna tell you, where the fuck can I get one of them cars <laughs> <laughs> with a number three on the side of that bitch? Brian, oh, uh, we're a little tired this time of day because we do about five to six hours of radio a day, and we're talking about worst sequels of all time. You got one uh, that you could uh, think of? Mm. <coughs> Put him on the spot. Uh, that's the Star Wars with the Ewoks. Yeah, awful, right? Just a horrible puppet show. All right, that's going nowhere. Uh, so, Brian. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. If you guys had prepped me, I would have thought about it. I could have come up with something nah. better. But look, let's be honest. We can don't we... prep us. Why would we prep the guests? <laughs> let's be honest, though. Can we drive like you can? Of course not. Drives the uh, number seven XM car. Well, it's great because he, he's got the XM all over his thing. His, uh, what, what are they called? It's not a uniform. His racing uh, outfit. Suit. Driver suit. <laughs> it's a driver suit. His driver suit. Very nice. The XM yeah. logo is right in the middle. It's no great. No tie necessary. Uh, Indy 500 going off when? May 28th? Uh, yeah, Sunday. That would be and, Sunday. Yes. Uh, how, how are we looking? Is that, the, what, is that the date? No. It's like the 25th or 6th. Uh... Is it the 28th? I don't even know. It would Sunday. be Sunday, May 28th at 1 p.m. With okay, ABC Sports providing live coverage beginning at 12 p.m. on XM Satellite Radio uh, Channel 145, the exclusive home of the IndyCar series. Wait a minute. XM Radio is going to play the... XM Satellite Radio. Is yes. going to play the Indianapolis 500? Yeah. How they play all the IndyCar the races. How? With uh, commentary. It's all about the announcement. On the race. Please give me just three seconds... Of race car commentary. No disrespect, because I want to ask you this, sir, uh, Mr. Herder. Yes. I, I'm black and I'm a a, a, a race car lame, layman. Please, could you please explain to That's, me? But, but by the way, that was redundant. That's redundant. <laughs> a black layman. Can you please tell me, sir, and no disrespect, how, please make race car driving, give me a new light on how to watch it, because all I see is something I can do if I decided to do it. Please let me know what the, yeah, the, skill, the skill level involved and everything. I'll right? give and it. And this is no disrespect. I'm just saying, it seems to me that you're driving cars. What's the thing? Right. I'll give it to you. Coming off the last turn, here it is, the final thing. Brian Herta is in first place, the number seven XM car across the finish line and wins the Indianapolis 500. That's how it goes. Exactly, and you can't have fuzzy dice on your mirror. Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, the the difference is, you know, like everybody's played basketball or baseball. You know how hard it is to hit a baseball, or you know, it's easy. You can put yourself in that position. Not many people have tried to go into turn one flat at 230 miles an hour. All right, so, see now. I'm I'll tell you how it works. Turn one flat. See, these are these are terms mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's making it more than just driving. And I'll tell you what it's all about. Because I've, I've listened to uh, the Indy 500 on the radio before. Okay. If, you, if you've if you watched it before, you know what they're talking about. You can picture it in your head what's going on Okay. based on what they're saying. It's not like a blind man is listening exactly. and has no idea what's going on. You you know what the cars look like, the drivers. You know when, when they're talking about moves that they're making and passes that are going on and what turns. You know exactly. You can picture it in your head. If you're home, you'll probably watch it on TV. 
it would be silly to listen at home. But if you're driving and you're very interested, uh, you're going to be able to know what's going on in the race. So what's going on? Yeah. People what's are, going on? People are driving. There's passing going on. There's uh, there's uh, yellow flags. There's uh, hopefully nah, uh, not nah, uh, red nah. flags. I'll tell you what's going on. Uh, that each of the eight uh, pistons in an Indy Car Series engine travels nearly, uh, oh, I think Jesus. it's one mile up and down in the cylinder every minute. What a bit of trivia. Every you're... minute, Patrice. So, Brian, what are you thinking? Dude, for I didn't something? even know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, he didn't even know that. Oh, he yeah. drives the car. Did you know that the 3.0 liter ethanol powered engines of the Indy Car Series cars produce more than 650 horsepower? Nearly four times that of the average street car? I bet you didn't know that high enough. Heard of. I, would, would, I you an, know that. would you another I guy did. try to run a nigga off the road if he was driving an Indy? Like if you saw me and I was like, "Hey Brian, would you just go fuck you and just <laughs> would you would you clip no, my back and on. have me roll down?" Come, come on. There's no. On. They don't really trade paint in uh, Indy racing. Not like no. NASCAR. Oh, it ain't that. It, it ain't no, that fighting. Like you don't have fenders. Your tires oh, are hanging out there. Yeah, they're exposed no. there, Patrice. Oh, it's a little friendlier than. Uh, Why don't we do the hacky yeah, radio it's, interview it's with Brian Herta? It's a kinder, gentler crowd. Yeah. Any car racing we love everybody is that car noises in the but background it's very dangerous it's not like jeff gordon and these other animals fighting every five a seconds. lot of guys yeah when they get close in nascar they're banging into each other these guys bump in each other hit tires they go it's, flying it's over johnny it's right. uh it's so very dangerous things, brian, happen, brian right. you calling us from the track i am yeah i hear the, the noises in the back yeah they got the garage doors going up and down like you know like i told them i'm doing a live radio interview the guys like okay no problem <laughs> <laughs> he slams the door shut. Thank you. Right. We should yeah. do the hacky radio interview. So, Brian, you ever get uh, pulled over for a speeding ticket? Well, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got to tell us how he drives a small car and does 55. Right. You right. Drive, you drive... Oh, yeah, yes. I have been are they racing groupies? And the cops say, what do you think you are, a race car driver? And you got to say, well, officer. Matter of fact, I am. Like Here's when my Jimmy card. gets pulled over and says a joke, and they go, "What are you, a pedophile?" <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, never once, never once has it gotten me out of a ticket. Brian, I, Brian, I did racing. I did racing groupies in terms of like, I know there's racing groupies, but what level of the finish do you not have groupies? Like, like eighth or ninth is where like it ends. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, I guess I'm high enough up. I haven't had to notice where that cutoff is. Oh, you got. Oh, okay. I didn't even know where I was going. It still popped out of my mouth, Jimmy. I apologize. He's he's up there. He, 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 he qualified. Jimmy. He qualified 16th. You know, the thing I can count on when I go on your guys' show is whatever questions you ask are not the questions that I, I've never answered before. <laughs> yeah. Nobody has ever asked me that. A lot of people have been saying, though, that like uh, that this year's race is probably going to be a much more competitive because just of a lot of, like, you know, what was because mm -hmm. of, like, last year and they had that what was from, from the time before. I, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, they're trying to pump it up, obviously. Every yeah. year they say that. Oh, this is going to be the best one ever. Yeah. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it is. I mean, it's. You know, it'll it'll only be the best one ever, as far as I'm concerned, if we put the number seven car in the front. There you go. Where are you sitting? Uh, uh, starting 16th, so 16th, right in the middle. 16th, in the middle of the pack. Yeah. Where is that? Inside or outside? I'm on the inside of the. Uh, what is that? The sixth row. How long? When when you're 16th, realistically, how long do you figure before you can work your way up front? How how long driving? Well, it really depends. I mean, we got a 500 mile race, and so you know the race car, the race setup that we put on for 500 miles is a lot different than what we do to qualify for 10 miles. Yeah, but you kind of uh, right so, away want to get up at least until the top like five or ten. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully, definitely. You know, by the time I make my first pit stop, we're up into the top ten, and I think where I start 18th last year and finished third, so I'm starting to better. Hopefully, I can finish to better. I'll be happy. You don't want to be first, right? Like, like, isn't that, isn't that, how many people are actually leading the race at the beginning of the race that win? Well, the, yeah, it, it's, it's, oh. I don't know what the exact Thanks. statistic, but it, it doesn't mean you're going to win for sure. With, right. With a 500 mile race. I've seen it. It's just so much time. Do you I've feel... seen indie racing, assholes. <laughs> Do you, what? They're looking at me like I'm a jackass asking you these questions. Do you feel this year, yeah, though, no, I mean, um, <laughs> is, is the odds, like, if you're, if you start out, like, and I'm not really an expert on this at all, but like, you're in UCD right in, in like 16th place or whatever. Now, are the odds of you getting to first place, like, are they good or are they bad? Because you, you have everybody in the competitive, like, status. Right. Well, I, I've had a really good month. Um, qualifying was kind of actually the worst day I'd had. Right. Uh, we heard we've about been that. Run, we've been running, you know, right up in the top top eight or so. 
every day that we've practiced. So I actually feel really good about it. I think I've got a better shot this year than I than I had even last year. How many years have you been racing, Brian? Oh, oh a long time. I don't know. Man. I think this is 14th yeah, I was gonna season say, racing Indy cars. Yeah, I was going to say like 15. Has so. it gotten safer? Because people say that like the, the danger level, I mean, it could be uh, higher because now yep. that there's all these the, 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 the uh, engines and the fact, you know, it's just like everything has gotten like a little bit faster and a little bit more hardcore and with the advent. Right. I mean, I'd say it's, in terms of the Indy car series, it's about the same as been since I've, I've been racing in the IRL this, this series for five years, and I'd say it really hasn't changed that much in that time. Maybe it's a little bit safer. How long I was working hard to try and make it safer, but it is what it is. How long does it actually take to run the Indianapolis 500? I'm a complete uh, novice. Oh it my depends God, on like you know, how many yellow flags I have and stuff, but generally about three and a half hours. Three and a half? Yeah, three uh, and a half. Patrice wants to know why you guys got to bring race into this thing. <laughs> what? Well, it is a race. <laughs> That's what I mean. Oh, race. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, uh, how hot is Danica? <laughs> I don't think. I don't know. You tell me how hot is she. I don't think she's that hot. For an Indy car driver, she is. Yeah, she, I think she's hot because she's a chick. In context, and that's about it. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. I mean, she, I mean, when you because, when you line her up actually, with, uh, because she's actually cool, and because you line her up with a bunch of dudes, of course really you're awesome. say she's yeah. hot. Hot for me. It, it, it definitely makes her hotter. I think. People actually thought, what's her name? Who was the uh, dragster? Uh, Shirley Muldowney. Shirley Muldowney. They uh, thought she was hot. Marv Albert. And then when you look, yeah, when you compare it to, you know, Don Garlitz, she looks like uh, the, she's very attractive. She looks like but... the mother from Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I should have killed you in a hole. I could see your dirty pillars. <laughs> well, Brian, good Brian. luck on Sunday. Yeah, best of luck on Sunday, man. I'm gonna we'll be, be watching, watching, man. I'm going to be yeah, watching. Currently in seventh place in the standings, just a few points away from third, right? Yeah, yeah, we're working there. Yeah, right on, man. Well, good luck on Sunday. Good luck, buddy. With the big one. I appreciate it. It's good to talk to you guys again. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Brian Herta, everyone. He drives the XM car. I hope the stock goes up, XM stock, or else uh, halfway through the race, they're going to have to take his tires. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be able to. They'll pull in the pit stop. They'll be like, it's not in the budget. We have no more tires for you. <laughs> they're coming next week. <laughs> so it'll be, Elo will be in the pit saying, oh, that's coming this summer. Oops, your we tires. We weren't prepared for this. We don't have enough money for gas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. That's what they would they do. They'd a propane tank up to the back. <laughs> like I said, give me 20 the only, the only, <laughs> give me twenty regular. <laughs> the only, the, the only car at the Indianapolis 500 that doesn't have advertising on it. Great, there you go. That's what XM gives you. The only car. Oh shit. Ah, uh, Scott in Florida. What's up? That should have got a bigger yeah, kinda, laugh. That I, was a I good totally fucking line. I think yeah, we're serious. all tired, and I think we I actually didn't know if you were serious. Well, we're That's giving the, him a half-ass uh, show. But it was a good line. Uh, what? Uh, I'm just kind of on this. I love the FM part, actually, and I'm an XM subscriber. I love the <laughs> FM. It just seems like your guests, you get really good guests over there, and they do the walkthrough. And for the most part, they kind of sound bored on the walkthrough, and then they get to the XM show, and then they leave, and then they got someplace else to go. Because they, you guys do the, oh, my God. You guys do the, Are you guys, you guys ever going to get the fucking way radio works? You guys do the dumb How many hours did Dennis Leary do on our show yesterday? Show. The, the, no, I agree. You the average, know. holy shit, I can't take these dummies. You're, the average, you're a dummy, you're Scott. The average celebrity the is most, minutes. the you're average. Doing a wrap -up. Holy you're shit, will you fucking listen to me? And I'll explain to your stupid right. brain. And you always complain how spent you are, Opie. You're always saying, God, I'm spent. I've got to go home. What I haven't said end? that in a while. First of all, I've, I've been re-energized by this. new. You guys are such <laughs> fucking assholes. I nit picky, all you. Nitpicky little bitches. Scott, You're a nitpicky bitch. Let me, let me, like, lower Scott so I can explain. Th these guys don't understand what they have with this radio show. Dennis Leary... Did uh hour, almost an hour and a half, uh, maybe even longer of radio yesterday. Yeah. You don't get that from any other radio show. An average uh, celebrity it's interview is supposed talk. to be 20 to 30 minutes tops. Every once in a while, you get a guy who's like, hey, I'm having fun. I'll hang for an hour. Right. This fucking guy is pissed off because Dennis Leary went home after doing an hour and a half of radio. But you should know, I'm on your side. What go I ahead, Scott. Go. I don't want you on my fucking side. You don't have to deal with these people. Just keep, put these people like me on hold. Yeah, but Scott... Hours. Scott, but... Just leave them on hold, never even deal with them. But and Scott... And even mention how people complain. Because it's a fuck. Just yeah, but Scott... The show. Yeah, because that's what we're doing. You did you a lot of the a lot of the second shows. You are such a dick, Scott. 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 Scott. You are such a dick, Scott. 
Wow. You are such a dick, Scott. <laughs> All right. You are such a dick, now, Scott. Now, how could you not you like him? You are such a dick, Scott. Penis. He's doing a Wawa penis. Wah, how could wah, you not like him? penis. Wawa penis. How do you like that, Scott? How do you like that, Scott? How do you like that? 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 How do you like that, Scott? Scott, what do you want to say? Scott's done. Oh. Uh, Bruce uh, from Louisiana, I just want to address that real quick. Uh, Bruce. Yeah, I was just going to ask Anthony. I got a, uh, how the fuck old are you that Dan Garlitz is the only drag racer you could come up with? All right, sir. It's Don Garlitz. And the reason I brought him up is he was racing at the same time Shirley Muldowney was. It would have been silly for me to pick a drag racer that's racing now and say that she's attractive uh, to him when they're in two different time periods. How the so I picked a race. All right, all right my fault. All right, you're damn right, Bruce from Louisiana. Let's break. And Thank one you, more sir. Thing. No, okay, one thing. Next time, hold up. <laughs> no, time one thing. Hold on, I want to hear what he has to say. Okay. What? Hit the water, hit the water, hit the water. All what? right. What happened? I think we made a helicopter crashing uh, reference, uh, uh, but we didn't even Can we care. break down what just happened on the show? Nervous breakdown? <laughs> well, I had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yes. I know that. My uh, fifth of the week. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Anthony had to rack his brain to come up with a drag race driver from this <laughs> same era as Blah Blah. <laughs> Shirley so Muldowney. Why? Who Because cares? the reference wouldn't have been right if I used if my one. My life depended on it. I couldn't name one. Richard Pryor. One. Richard Pryor. Wendell Scott. <laughs> <laughs> drag racer. I just wanted my reference to be accurate. That's all. You don't need to be that accurate. It I, makes us all look really bad. No, I try. I want to be. In, I try to be informed. All right. Are we? We're not to number one yet, are we? No. Top five sequels of all time. We'll get through this and we'll get out of here. Uh, Patrice O'Neill is going to be at Caroline's all weekend long, starting tomorrow night. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Uh, number five, worst sequels of all time. I think I popped something. In my oh, yelling until your veins just go. <laughs> something popped on the right side. I might have to have that yeah, checked after the show. Just, I might want to have that checked. It, did, it oh didn't sound right, right? I, I wanted to ignore it, but it, it just didn't. It didn't uh, hurt like a snap, <laughs> like when, <laughs> like when you pop the uh, bubbles, that packing bubbles, <laughs> right. and then uh, your voice kind of went. <laughs> I felt something kind of just go on the right side over I here. Would go. You're not supposed to, it sounded like a hip. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> there might be a problem. Uh, I'm not even kidding. Okay. This nigga broke his throat. <laughs> oh, my God. That hurt. <laughs> that nigga broke These his throat. These guys get me so fucking frustrated. We're giving them so much show. We're trying our best. Opie. We're still trying to figure out the kinks, but I think I think this is great. Opie has an Adam's grape now. I think it's, I think the, I think things are going very well so far. The guests are getting better. Adam's applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> the walkover is like an amazing new bit. I love the dump report thing. We're getting bigger guests. We're going to have bigger events of because of this thing. And I think uh, the first half of the Opie and Anthony show forces us to get into some serious you know, radio instead of doing the hang all morning. Right. Because <clears throat> we only have a certain amount of time. So we feel like, all right, we got to get our energy up and get into things. We've been doing the same bit here for two hours. <laughs> two hours, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> All right, this making us yell at you. This would have taken three days on uh, <laughs> on the commercial radio I stations. A quick uh, radio question, oh. sir. Yes, I'll answer it. What? Uh, why? Okay, why can't you do what you did just now and just do this? For, so from six to nine, if it drags out that long. Because the QM won't allow it, and what happens is when Arbitron wants to know what the uh, 18 to 34 QM is, it just oh can't happen. Oh my God! Shut up! Shut up! Technically, Shut up. Arbitron has Quiet. a way of looking at 1839 men, Quiet. but that demo Quiet. is never the same in all the markets. Quiet. Because sales has to know. Quiet. What does bad kequels mean? Well, I, oh, sequels with a C? Oh. It's on the pad data. E. Oh, Jesus, no way. Oh, see, Derek's not oh. in. Oh, okay. Derek's That's Danny making Derek look Derek? stupid. <laughs> Danny's fucking Derek so bad today. Cause Derek, Have you been doing that, like, um, all day? Yeah, Derek has uh, stepped out, so Danny's like, you know what, this can make myself look a little better than Derek. I'm going to misspell everything. All right, here we go. The Where top. is Derek, by the way, besides not a Mensa meeting? 
<laughs> Top uh, five sequels. Uh, worst sequels of all time. Let's do this. Number five, we already did, so there we go. Yes. What are you, a pedophile? <laughs> We're closer to going home. What, what's wrong? I miss. Anthony's lying before. What? I miss. Oh, you're here. Wow, Nothing. Derek is actually coming in the studio. Uh, Danny. He's, he's Danny. Great. Danny is filling the pad data with all kinds of misspelled words because everyone thinks you're running it, so they all Fucking think you're asshole. stupider than you really are, which is almost impossible. So <laughs> he's been running the board the whole day today, so you but he's doing it on purpose to make uh, you look stupid. You, you look really dumb. Just you like, look like a smart guy. Yes. Like you look like a college guy that's kind of smart. He's yeah. disarmingly stupid. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Fuck! I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not even <laughs> taking this shit. He doesn't know. This I isn't his uh, deal. Yeah, he doesn't he's know. He's a behind the scenes guy. <laughs> he doesn't but know. but I'll tell you, that right there was smart. Because every one of you other idiots sit there and duh, I duh. he goes, I'm not taking this fucking right. shit, uh, and he's out with his young lieutenant colonel hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you listen to me, young lieutenant. Yeah. Top five uh, worst sequels of all time. So uh, we did Batman and Robin mm -hmm. featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger and George Clooney as Batman. That's uh, the fifth worst sequel of all time. Number four. <laughs> Blues Brothers 2000. Oh, yes. yeah, okay. Now we're talking. All right. Wow. Now we're talking. That's with Joe, Mor Joe Morton um, from A Brother of Another Planet and fucking John Goodman and a kid. Yeah. Do you know what the Awful. name? Awful. You know what the other name of that one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I bet I can guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let E Rock say that one. Sticking with the theme that went. Yeah, it's so easy. Let E Rock out. E Rock, e -Rock no. what is it called? I wasn't paying attention. Of course you Oh weren't. my god! The easiest one of the day. Wait, there's a sound clip. Please get that. Him going, I wasn't paying What's attention. What's on his screen right now? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, fucking arid or degree. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Arid. What do you use for deodorant? Fucking wet, wet meat? <laughs> do you do you dip a pork chop and fucking yeah, do you shake and bake something in fucking in in gel and then wipe it under your dirty arms? Chicken cutlet speed yeah. stick. What do you use? Animal fat as deodorant? He's Gelatin. On, he's on arid.com. Here, uh. let me dry your armpits. Oh my god. <laughs> Sweating through two shirts and a t shirt. You fucking nervous monkey. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Please, so. God, don't let them see that I'm a complete ass. <laughs> I wanna go. Alright, fourth worst sequel of all time Blues Brothers 2000. Oh, god damn it. With yeah. uh, good old Goodman there, yep. John Goodman and, uh, and Dan Aykroyd. Cheaper by the Dozen 2. Number three. Oh, I love this movie. Patrice is going to have something to say about number three. Mm -hmm. Worst sequels of Roots. all time. <laughs> <laughs> the Next Generation. Roots, Roots, Roots 2. Roots 2, oh Roots two The Revenge. The yeah. Where Kunta Kinte follows you to Bahamas. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Roots 7, the you know what's take Manhattan. <laughs> oh, Roots 8, put them in space. <laughs> <laughs> they hate my obnoxious laugh, so I'm going to laugh more now. Uh, number three, worst sequels of all time, Leprechaun, back to the T-H-A hood. Yeah, but but uh, Leprechaun, first, yeah, that's, that's so fucking stunk. That man. movie was that hilarious because the Leprechaun with. thing is smoking crack and hunting homies. Yeah, You seen it? Yes, it's hilarious. It's, it really is a funny fucking movie. It's, it's so bad, it's Leprechaun funny. look like, uh, what's his, John Madden? Doesn't the it's Leprechaun look exactly just like, like him, the big eyebrows? I don't agree with he's that. He's smoking weed and hunting the homeboys yeah, who stole his pot of gold. Yeah. And he's killing them in homeboy ways. He's yeah. like, come here, let me... I'm going to throw a rim at your face. So, hey, you, throw, you kill some motherfucker with a rim. With a rim. <laughs> Kills a nigga with a basketball. Hey, nice basketball. Throws it through his eye. Oh, shit. What is that? his face is a basketball. <laughs> Dude, what was that about? <laughs> it's one of those movies that's worth watching if you're in the right uh, state of mind. It's hilarious. Oh, Jesus Christ. If a, if a movie could spark from... a race riot, this is it. <laughs> Pete from Connecticut is ready to spark a race oh, riot. Oh, shit. Roots 2. Electric Jigaboo. <laughs> Roots too. All right, leave it to Connecticut. Uh, that one came came right out of uh, Connecticut. Big racist state. You in Massachusetts? All right, number two, the uh, runner-up for worst sequel of all time. What do yes. you think? What hasn't been said? Uh, hmm. Worst one ever. 
This one, number one or two? This is the um, the, the runner up. The oh, runner, the runner up. up. Did you just peek at number one? No, you did, didn't you? Taylor Hicks. He's gonna win it all tonight, but who yeah. cares? Who cares? Uh, and Breaking we were, two, and we we're big the... fans of American Idol. They could go fuck themselves. What, hey. Too scared to have the American Idols on the Opie and Anthony show. We yeah, had, they might have to hear had... what they heard when we're talking about the Hinkle gentleman. Dude, we had we had Ace Young on, and we treated him with nothing but respect. And we didn't even like the guy. And what did we what get? other radio shows did they do? We think we, he was a poser and uh, questionably <laughs> gay. Route 17. But we didn't say any of that shit. <laughs> One is dating my daughter <laughs> from Chester's liver. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're talking, you're trashing him and saying how much respect. We treated that faggot with <laughs> so much love and attention. That fuck, like that fuckhole taking dicks in his cigar burn every five seconds. Dick sucking oh, faggot. But we were so nice to him. And all we him. did was stroke his gay mane oh, and, and, and feed him fucking um, M and M's. That dude, I'm sick. Uh, I'm sick of it though. <laughs> I'm like, I, I I think Simon Cowell is is unbelievable on that show, and and they just make fun of him for no reason. I wanted to talk <clears> to Simon. I thought we'd have a great interview with that guy. I think Ryan Seacrest stinks, stinks. Mm. And we were supporting the show since day one, every week. And and I I hear these American Idols on the dumbest radio shows. Like yeah, what? Then why aren't they here? Why can't they be on this well, show? They're you, all over America and Canada. The first question will be, Hey Taylor, you retarded, stupid ass, Absolutely redneck, not. dumb idiot. Absolutely Stop not. Stop pretending to be Great Joe Cocker, fuckface. <laughs> Ace Young came on and we did a good bit with him. We had Anthony's sister uh, interview him because yeah. you know, all the girls love him. Right. And Anthony found out that uh, Dawn was pretty much getting moist watching American Idol every hey, week. Hey, it's my sister. Roots 30, pimp my ride. All right, here we go. <laughs> Runner up, worst sequel of all time. <laughs> it's cute. Caddyshack 2 all right. mm -hmm. is not the number one no. sequel number of two? all time. Runner up. That movie is, uh, we don't even have to talk about yeah, it. It's so, so fucking bad. There's some funny parts. And Dan Ac with Dan Aykroyd trying to be Bill Murray, that is, I mean, we played all his uh, all his lines one day on this show. And then, uh, well, uh, what's oh, his name? Oh, Jackie Mason. Jack Jackie yeah, Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they couldn't get Rodney. Right. Jackie Mason trying to be the comic. It was so bad. Do you know what's funny, though? It's the, what's the gopher? He made me laugh. Dude. Stop it. They didn't have Bill Murray. They didn't have Rodney. They didn't have uh, Ted Knight. It said special appearance by Chevy Chase, and it looks like they filmed it months after everything else. Because they knew how bad the movie was in. and yeah. just dropped them in, right? Dropped them in. They had the gopher, though. He was funny, wow. running through the, the earth. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't like puppets in movies. That's what I'm starting to think. So, uh, <laughs> ungodly. <laughs> Worst sequel of all time. Worst sequel of all time. Did we say it? No. Have we said no, it? No, I don't think... Oh, wait. You what might have, genre is it? No, you might have said oh. it. Oh. I think you might have said it. I already know it. I think Anthony said it. The Amityville Horror 2. Let me uh, say hi to Wade in Toronto. Wade. How you doing, It's guys? my deal, Wade. What's up, Wade? Hey, Wade. Oh. Wade. Oh, these are well, some sweet guys, numbers. Man, you, guys, you guys told us to give you a couple weeks when this new deal came in, and I got to say, you guys are doing great now, man. All right. We know we Thank are. You, you, so Thank you, sir. Thank you, Wade. And Jimmy, I think they let your joke slide earlier when when Anthony said dragster and you said Marv Albert. Yeah, I thought that was a good <laughs> oh, one. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. Well, the listeners are here to point it out, and we can laugh later when we hear it in the replay. Very good. Uh, Chris in Florida. Hey, listen. First off, guys, I got two of the good black uh, man movie quotes. Thanks for it. But I do want to say to all the cock chugging pussies out there, yeah. keep bitching. Go listen to Paul Harvey. You don't want to hear it, don't listen, right? There you go. If you think there's another show out there doing a better job than us, then go find us. Exactly. Go fucking I, I find us. Give me a chance, right? But that, all right, anyhow, how about this one? Patrice and Better Off Dead when uh, John Cusack's <laughs> going underneath the bridge in the garbage truck and the black guy says, Hey, uh, folks throwing away a perfectly good white boy like that. Yeah, but that's an old joke. Okay, well then wait, I got one more. <laughs> okay. You got one more? Hurry up, oh, let's okay. go. We want to go home. Okay. The, the black guy in the boat on Caddyshack. He doesn't say anything. Oh, yeah, he does the big uh, googly eyes that was before really he jumps <laughs> off and the boat cuts his uh, right. little boat. Uh, uh, Duke in Jersey. Go ahead, Duke. Yeah, Crocodile Dundee spawned some good sequels. And in the first one, when uh, Crocodile goes drinking in the bar, the black guy, the pimp, goes, He's cool. 
<laughs> you <laughs> point, Teresa, some... you have pointed out yeah, something yeah, it's that's very funny. Like yeah. it, we've all noticed it, but never really I thought never about really it. Registered. But I meant to point it out. No, you didn't. That's my new bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything somebody does, I was gonna do. I was just gonna. <laughs> what you gotta snap your fingers first, Norton? <laughs> I was gonna point that out. <laughs> or this. Ah, oh, I was just saying that. Anthony uh, named the worst sequel of all time. What genre, I Opie? Did. What genre? Uh, dancing. <laughs> oh, what? You named Dirt, it? Dirty Dancing? It's a dancing movie. It's Stayin a alive. dancing movie? Staying Alive. I mentioned it. From Saturday Night Fever? I want credit! No, you were just going to mention it, and I said it first. Yeah. Ooh, did you no, really? I did say it. Mike did you really? I absolutely did. No, we didn't. Did you really? I bet you. I Someone bet in you. The booth did, I bet you. I really? kissed to a hand job. Did you really? Yeah. <sighs> did you really? I promise you. Did you really? Wouldn't lie. Did you really? I always tell the did truth. Did you really? Even when I lie. Did you really? Stop it! Yeah. Did you really? Stop it! Did you? Yeah. Stop really? it! I did. Really? Stop it! What? Stop it! Really? Did you really? Stop it! Did you really? Stop it! Did you really? Stop it! Uh, all right. <laughs> At least I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who doesn't like hearing the tired uh, version of the show when we're punch drunk? Go screw. You know what I say? I say this. Ooh, I don't even know how you said that. That's right. Hey, by the way, we're getting our uh, our book back, I hear. What Someone, book? The book Obits from oh. the old days that they uh, took from us when we got fired. Bionetics. I thought you meant Honcho. I can't find my copy. <laughs> We're talking hundreds and hundreds of bits from the old days that uh, we weren't allowed to play that they just <laughs> took away from us when we got fired. I heard they found the book. Rent, boys. I I I I, I thought that I want to hear that bit where the Edmund Fitzgerald sank in Eric's armpit. Fucking <laughs> 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 okay. beat it, Lake Gitchagoony pit. <laughs> Lake Gitchagoony. His pits were a stain, and the ship was going down. <laughs> Brothers, it's too wet to dry ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his shirts were all wet. He was covered with sweat. And the dumb fucker wasn't even listening to the show while he was three inches away from it. Give me the info for Jimmy Day. That's how we end today. Cheryl. <laughs> uh. All right. And I will be. I have to say, the Stress Factory added a show for me Sunday because uh, Friday, Saturday are sold out. And I think Sunday was almost sold out. There was like, That's it might awesome. be totally sold. So late show Sunday, 10.30, 7.32, Ha, ha. I want to see him put his arms up and see five little Yates kids <laughs> drop out from his armpits. Did it hurt when Susan Smith parked her minivan on your chest and backed it into your pits? <laughs> 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 uh, if Jesus wanted to walk across Eric's bed, he'd have to part his arms. <laughs> Moses, whoever it was. Why was Scott Peterson in your armpit on Christmas Eve? <laughs> well, what happened? Wait till tomorrow on Jimmy Day. In detail. What happened with Jimmy Day? No, we just gotta wait till tomorrow and announce it. Oh, okay. One minor thing still l l ling lingering. What the hard rock? HBO being involved. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Day's coming to the Opie and Anthony show. It's just got to wait. A yes, whole day of Jimmy. Only Jimmy. Jimmy, nothing but Jimmy. Yeah. Hey, hey when are we getting the book Obits back? I get it tomorrow. The actual book that I they took it. from us? That, the 15, that 15, 15 tomorrow. Nice. That, that fateful we'll day? The big bosses. Huh? Yeah, they said they Where had was it? it? I, it's, this is a mystery. I'll find out tomorrow. Nobody's told me this. They just said they Earl's had it. Earl's probably had it. Yeah, Earl had I it. I bet Earl had it the whole time. Yeah. There's Poor hundreds. Would leave the building there's yesterday. hundreds of bits. Why? Well, when the fire, when the fire thing happened. Hundreds of bits. Hundreds of bits. <laughs> right, Ben? <laughs> hundreds what fire of thing. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> that mic uh, just gets slammed down right. and people run away. That's another story. Hey, Katrina oh. pits. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Hun hundreds of bits that will be added to this channel. Oh. Wow, why Kenny's are you hurting him? Kenny's not here, Jimmy. I was talking to Eric, stupid. Yeah, oh. he was goofing oh. on Eric. Oh, I thought he was not a No, you're Katrina Hare. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> started choking Jimmy. They're dying in the other room. Of course they are. Right. Beat it, sugar nose. <laughs> <laughs> Worst sequel of all time. <laughs> yes, staying alive. Staying alive. Staying alive. Uh, he had, had his face in front of a mirror more than Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Goes from uh, Tony Monero in Brooklyn.
to Tony Manero on Broadway, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Horribly <laughs> bad. <laughs> and the, and Frank Stallone music is in this? Of he course dances it to is. Frank Stallone music? Why wouldn't you? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That is horrible. <laughs> the only dance I would do to Frank Stallone music is the dance that you do at the end of a rope. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Blow up that raft. I want to wring out Eric's shirt. <laughs> Just sit back and you'll hear a tale. <laughs> a tale of two fateful pits. <laughs> Katrina Pitts. <laughs> That's fucking terrible, man. The fucking uh, 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 Pat, Pat from Monarchy. Hey, guys. Uh, David Blaine wants to spend a week in Eric's pit. <laughs> <laughs> David, David Blaine wants to spend a week in Eric's pit. <laughs> Pounding him. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, God, no. Chris in Pennsylvania. Chris? Hey, is there a looter with a case of Heineken in our Eric Garfield? <laughs> a looter with a case of Heineken. <laughs> Did Charles Stewart kill his wife and then jump into Eric's armpits? <laughs> Did it hurt when Ted Kennedy <laughs> crashed his car into your pits? <laughs> Not as much as when his nephew hit the other one with his plane. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! That's right, sewer pits, take it. <laughs> He's gonna need a tender sentiment, sir, oh, man. Jesus. I'm gonna have to make this nigga look buy a tampon sweater. <laughs> oh, 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 Eric! Oh. <laughs> 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 Hey, was Tommy Lee babysitting near your armpits? <laughs> did, did William Shatner look at your armpits and send his wife over to you? <laughs> oh, that's fucking uh, 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 Let's get a Pat for Minaki. Pat. God. He can't stay in Eric's pits with three pounds on him. <laughs> he, can't, he can't stay in Eric's pitch with three barrels on him. That was good if people would have heard. I know. You can't hear his, uh, oh, his insults. Oh, oh is that uh, funny? Katrina pitch almost made me fall out. Uh, uh, Eric, uh, do you need a tender sentiment? I, I think you might. Say so. I think no? might. Yeah, I think you might have to end the show with a tender sentiment. Oh, right. You took a lot of abuse. Uh, I think you need one of these. You know what else you need? The grounds crew from Shea Stadium to put your undershirt on. <laughs> <laughs> Do they squeeze you? They call them tarmac on. Tarmac on. That's, that's oh. good at Dan and PA. Oh. Dan? Dan? Oh. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, uh, they, uh, turn on CNN. There's a seven-year-old kid that's swimming across Eric's pit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sweat will numb your arms in a matter of minutes. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know why I'm joining it. Oh, no, I love Eric. It's so funny. Kill a white girl and throw in a crab bag and put it at the bottom of Eric's pit. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of people <laughs> went into Eric's armpits. <laughs> there were not many survivors because there weren't enough lifeboats. <laughs> Hold on, Jack. Hold on to the door. Don't slip into the murky depths of Eric's armpits. They sweat as much as my camel toe. <laughs> Just let them touch it. Let them get the kayak. 
and put it in his armpit. <laughs> Break through the shirts. Do something to help these people. Do you know, do you know the international law that if Cubans make it to his chest <laughs> instead? <laughs> There's black people standing on his nipples waiting for helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you are a sweaty failure. <laughs> oh, uh, let's say hi to Frank in Chicago. Frank, what's up? Yeah, uh, Catherine Hepburn calls to the loons and he rocks pits. <laughs> oh. On golden pits. <laughs> uh, Jimmy in New York. Jimmy. Oh. Yeah. Jimmy. Okay, Leon Klinghoffer pushed into Eric's pit. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Ah, wait, no, no, that's okay. That wasn't that bad, actually. Oh, I think maybe people didn't hear it, uh, Jimmy. Say that again. No, Jimmy. I do it with him. Leon, huh? was Leon Klinghoffer pushed into Eric's pit. <laughs> Thank you, so stupid. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> Greg wiped out in Eric's armpits. <laughs> Greg! <laughs> I heard uh, Kevin Costner's in your pits making a movie called Waterworld. <laughs> hey, hey uh, is George Clooney going to shoot on your pits for Ocean's 13? <laughs> Lord of the Rings, the two pits. <laughs> Boudicca, the blunt master from Connecticut, with that one. Uh, yeah. Look for Eric uh, Nagel starring in Poseidon. <laughs> Eric doing jumping jacks. <laughs> You're gonna need a tenor sentiment to end the show. Uh, uh, Wait, before the tenor sentiment, uh, he's gonna put deodorant on with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice O'Neill, thanks. Caroline's all weekend long, starting tomorrow night. Two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Okay. Are there zebra muscles in Eric's pits? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> we, end, we end with an E-Rock tender sentiment. Yeah, this is Eric. It's 6 in the morning. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> this actually... should be Eric at 6 in the morning. <laughs> Actually, unfortunately, it's more like this. <laughs> Pennywise, dollar foolish. All he right, doesn't know how to use deodorant. Come on, man. Leave pussy arms alone. <laughs> Le Les from Pittsburgh. His girlfriend has to put on floaties before they cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Eric has a clit on his chest. <laughs> oh, Eric. Oh, mm -hmm. oh man. That poor bastard. Oh, damn it. Uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, well. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Come on, man. <laughs> what? He just went on a tire about this poor kid's underarm pit sweating. <laughs> just sweating. Yeah. He's a little hot or nervous or something. Uh, what are you going to do? Goop on him for 20 minutes straight? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We should uh, leave, I think. But Well, well, Pat from Minaki. Pat. <laughs> hey. Open your order. For the Frenchman in Eric's pit. <laughs> what? Oh, he couldn't go three for the three. Because he, oh, he said oh. Opie should have fought. For the Frenchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can barely understand him. Yeah. Let's go to Matt. Matt. Yeah, how you doing? I heard that once a year Robert Wagner lays a wreath on Eric's chest. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Chris in Illinois. Chris. <clears throat> hey, guys. What's up? Hey. Hey, uh, I was wondering if I found the love boat underneath Eric's pit. Yeah, all right. It's time for it. Uh, could be time for a, one more. Mike in Atlanta. Mike. You go in the cage. Cage goes in the pits. <laughs> you go in the pits. Sharks in the pits. Oh, shark. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Farewell and adieu <laughs> to you. <laughs> Another T-shirt. Farewell and adieu to you, lady of Spain. Why don't we end with a... Tender sentiment from E. You know what, Eric? We did beat you up kind of good. You know we're teasing you, of course. Yeah. You know we don't mean it. Uh, Travis and PA. Travis? Hey, I want to know uh, who lives in a pineapple on Eric's pet? SpongeBob <laughs> Square <laughs> Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Todd in Texas. <laughs> Todd. Hello. Hey, Todd. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? I was just going to say it's going to take months to clean up all the dead Indonesians under Eric's armpit. Um, a tsunami well, stretch, yeah. It right. was, sir. A lot of people doing that. Was, uh, that, that was very hurtful, Todd. Yeah, that's just a lot of people died during that tsunami. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> out, guys. All right, there he goes. Why don't we end with a tender sentiment from Eric? All right. Don't get them wet. <laughs> Come on, hurry up, dig Category 9 arm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go, guys. Here we go. A tender sentiment from our friend Eric. A big shout-out to all of my parents' friends listening in West Palm Beach. I hope each and every one of you nosy Nancys dies in a house fire. Turn on an oldie station already, you cryptic societal burdens. Why would he insult the... Yeah, I don't like oh, that. That's it's not a very good tender sound. Who wrote that one? Supposed to be I, wrote I wrote that all, one. I wrote all of them. You did? I certainly did. That one was meant for the other show. Well... Oh, Jimmy. All right, can we, uh, we... Jimmy ruined the bit. I didn't ruin the bit. <laughs> I did not ruin... <laughs> You're leaving? You're just out of here. No, no, just... Look at him. How do you top? <laughs> I'm out. I am. I'm out. Yeah. Well, why don't we end with another sentiment that might be more about E-Rock? All right. Your life plus zero equals zero. <laughs> <laughs> now that's perfect. <laughs> Ben's hog is just big enough for my baby. Well, I do have big tits, goddammit. God damn it, what night! Whip them out Wednesday. Whip them out Wednesday.